Young Turks Smack off your smirks on what they don't want to see Like a million Jimmy Perks Stand up guys rise, no disguise, we in the place Thick ass thieves, nobody is safe Reality rap, don't touch the waters Cold of the streets, you gotta follow orders Stand up guys rise, no disguise, we in the place Thick ass thieves, nobody is safe Reality rap, don't touch the waters Cold of the streets, you gotta follow orders And now it's time for Mob Talk Radio with your host, Jeff Canarsi. Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Uh, do me a favor, if you can hit the number one in the chat, that would be perfect. That way I know all of you can hear me, and then I will uh, go to the chat and say hello to everybody before we get going. Let's see. Do, 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 do. All right, I see some ones, so there we go. I'm going to go to the top of the chat. And then work my way down. I see Chris Gorky is in the chat. Miss can't be wrong. How are you? Uh, Jamie, what's shaking? I uh, hope those work nights get a little better. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Chardonnay, how are you? Scrolling down. Wesley Vaughn, how are you? Uh, let's see who else we got in here. Alex D, what's shaking? I will come back to that. Anthony, what's shaking? Profits for life. How are you? JL, what's up? How are you? Bear Pushy, how are you? Uh, Eric Dizzy, how are you? Uh, Jason Fink. Huge asshole. It's <laughs> a great name. Dave, how are you? And let's see, we got uh, Donnie and the Smiths, Haunted Ghost Tube people, uh, Browning Automatic. Catherine Marco, Brian, Chris the Cop, how are you? Pat, how's it going? Jess, how are you? And I think I have almost got it. Kay Goody, thank you very much. I appreciate the money. And uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about donations a little bit tonight just because uh, it, it's probably time that I actually do that. Uh, so before I get started, uh, I am going to drop the link tonight. Anybody is certainly welcome to come in and talk about Anything that revolves around organized crime, I got a couple of things I want to talk about first. The link is dropped. Uh, and anybody can come on, doesn't matter. Even the haters. If you've always wanted to take a shot at me, now is your opportunity. Uh, and I, this is not a, a dramatic thing coming out of me. This is just a, if you've ever wanted to have the opportunity to say what you needed to say, tonight's going to be the night to do it. And it's the only time I'm ever going to do it. Uh, but if you come on here and start acting the fool, then uh, you're not going to last very long. Carlos, how are you, my buddy? Uh, Billy, uh, you know, Billy, you come in here all the time and you need on me. You get me in trouble with people. <laughs> uh, anyway, before we uh, we get started, uh, I didn't listen. I didn't come playing with a lot of stuff tonight. I just came playing uh, with a couple of things. But. I want to talk about FBS for a minute. And the reason why I want to uh, is it, it doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on, right? It doesn't matter uh, what team you play for, so to speak. At the end of the day, uh, when when people's families get attacked over stupid shit like YouTube, I mean, that's, that's really when you're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Uh, and I think that no matter whether you like somebody or not, there's a limit to what you should sort of say. Uh, like I always say, don't talk about it, 
be about it. And a lot of people aren't being about it. They're just talking about it. Uh, and so on behalf of myself uh, to FBS, and, and I'm not going to get into, you know, what he's going through because it's not my place to talk about it. But I will say that I wish, you know, him and his family nothing but the best. Nothing but the best. Uh, and I think everybody should be on the same page when it comes to that. Uh, family over everything. Always. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of degenerates who put principle and their silly little beliefs above what's really important in life. Uh, so on behalf of myself, most importantly, uh, FBS, I, I wish nothing but the best for you and your family and anything I can do, I'll do. All right. So we're going to leave it at that. Thank you very much for the cash app. Um, so pretty, yeah, everybody likes the shirt. Somebody sent me this shirt years ago and I barely ever wear it. Uh, but no, it's not new merch. Okay. So let me click on this. So I have to ask the question, why do you say this guy, Vinny, uh, is not going to be released? Okay, so about a month ago, for those of you that know, those of you that don't, Vinny Basquiano was once allegedly the head of a crime family, okay? He got life without parole. For some reason, a couple of months back, a lot of newspapers started saying, oh, he's going to get a new trial, going to get a new trial. Uh, and so here's the thing that that uh, there's a discrepancy which nobody seems to want to talk about. Uh, a lot of these mob, so-called mob content creators came out and says, oh, Vinny Basquiano is going to get out. How do you get out when you're caught on a wiretap ordering a murder? You cannot undo that. Now, if it's a murder that an informant testifies in court against you and says, well, I know he did it. He ordered it. That, that's one thing. You can fight that, especially if there's misconduct from the FBI and there's misconduct from the informant. The problem is you cannot undo a murder conviction. When it's your own voice on wiretap bragging about it, you cannot undo a second murder conviction when there's a handwritten note that says, here's a hit list. Here's who I want killed. That's just the reality. You can't undo that. It's the same type of stuff you keep hearing from people that say Anthony Center and Joey Tester are going to get out. They're never going to get out. Life without parole means life without parole. Uh, if it's a, a judicial misconduct or if it's a, a legalese misconduct, that's a different story. But the reality is, is when you say on a wiretap exactly what you did, you're not. How can you justifiably sit in front of a judge and say, well, that's not what I meant? The reality is he got caught on a wiretap saying that. But what's here, here's what's really interesting um, is that all of these articles that came out a month ago are no longer up anymore. The New York Post, the New York Times, there was a couple of other uh, news outlets that covered this. They're gone. Why is that? And they're gone because they misspoke. It, it's the same sort of nonsense that when they talked about uh, Carmine Persico being an informant, and he wasn't. He wasn't. That's just people don't know how to read uh, paperwork. Uh, thank you very much, Wesley Vaughn. Uh, thank you very much, KXTA, and thank you, K Goody. I really do appreciate it. And listen, I'm usually typically not the guy that's going to ask for donations, but the reason why we're going to start accepting them and the reason why we're going to push is because we are coming out with a series this fall, and I'm going to show you the preview of it right now. Uh, we have enough funding to do six. I want to do 12. And so every single dollar that we do get goes to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the promo and then I'll explain a little bit and then we'll get on with the rest of the show. Notti d'un tempo che fu, tre cavalieri da Spagna se partiru, dalla Bruzia Sicilia passaru, e poi ca in Calabria se fermaru, ventun anni lavoraru sotto terra, per fondare le regole sociali, leggi d'onori di sangue e di guerra. Leggi maggiori, minori e criminali, esti regoli di sangue e d'omertà, 
da patria figli si li tramandaro questi si leggi di la società leggi così non da storia da saru Da camurra e mafia, è società organizzata, drang da camurra e mafia, Sicilia, Napoli, Calabria onorata, la mattina a mezzo di lumari, una barchicetta vitti navigari, cinque veli e sette marinari. Uno di chisti me vosi domandari, giovanotto di citi che cercati, onore e sangue e un ci rispondia, sopra sta barca se voi inchianati, onore e sangue troviamo per la via, e me portaro a mezzo di lumari, tani soletta in omo favignana. I'm laughing because I looked at the, the Facebook. I got two people, two people watching on Facebook. <laughs> Epic fail. Anyway, uh, so that's uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be all over the place. Chicago, Florida, uh, Pennsylvania, just really all over the place. And what we're going to do, New York especially, uh, is what we're going to do is we are going to go to the most infamous mob places in existence. Uh, and not only are we going to show you where things are at, but we're going to eat in some very famous places, talk about some culture, have some guests and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it's going to be one of these things where it, it's, it's truly going to be hit or miss. It really is, but we're looking forward to doing it. And uh, the, uh, the <laughs> Billy, and the first uh, episode is going to be in South Philadelphia, and then there'll be some stuff in New York and some other places like that. A lot of surprises along the way. Uh, no, Nikki, Nikki, Nikki the Crow did not try to shake me down. Uh, not at all. Not at all. Not to my, not to my knowledge. Uh, okay, so the other thing. What's up, Gianni? How are you? Uh, is Tommy Stiggs in here? Oh, there he is. Hey, Tommy. How you doing? North Jersey. We love North Jersey. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and uh, like I said, I didn't come in here with a, with a ton of things to discuss tonight because it's really going to be more open forum uh, than stuff like that. Oh, before I go there, the reason why, you know, I, I was never against donations, but I didn't press for them because I really didn't need it. But we've put $40,000 into this production, uh, you know, just across the room. I've got like a $25,000 camera, and then that doesn't even talk about the other camera I have. Plus the uh, the editing software, the computers, it, it's just, it's like a fucking workshop in here. Uh, but we've put like 40 grand into it and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. So now it's time to get a little money back and uh, 
you know, we bring you the freshest content, I think more than a lot of other people. Uh, but that's just my opinion to each their own. Everybody can, uh, you know, like whoever they like. Uh, now the other thing is I recently saw someone, uh, post something about, uh, gravano and and alan kaiser and and you know why uh why there isn't a limitation uh on murder or why is there a limitation on murder with gravano and, and alan kaiser now here's the thing first of all as you know uh alan kaiser was a 17 year old kid who was killed by sammy gravano uh sammy over the years has blamed different people including louis Molito, for that hit uh, but reality is, when it hit the newspapers, the one thing that they did uh, was they said that it was a John Doe. And, th and there's a reason why they do that. First of all, number one, uh, he's a minor. So therefore, uh, they're not going to mention, uh, mention a minor's name in the newspaper. Okay. Number two, can you imagine in the New York press alone, uh, if he had said that he killed a child? First of all, you don't want prospective jurors to know that uh, because that's going to be a problem because no jury is going to sit there in their right mind and go along with everything that Sammy Gravano was going to testify to if they knew he killed a 17-year-old. Second of all, uh, I believe that Joy and her family, the Kaisers, didn't even find out who killed Alan Kaiser in, uh, for 10 years. So they weren't even sure. So they they hid it just long enough so that it would not enter uh, the stratosphere. Uh, and I've always said that I don't think John Gotti knew that that happened either. And there's a reason why I'm going to tell you how I know he didn't know about that. When John Gotti and Frankie Lacasio uh, basically tried to appeal their convictions, one of the things that happened was they brought up a lot of perjury uh, about Gravano and his murders and, and things that he was somehow seemingly didn't have to testify about. And one of the ways that you perjure him is by bringing that, bringing that murder up. And believe me, if John Gotti and Frankie Loke had known that he had murdered a child, they would have quickly put that into the docket and into their case files because that would have been something that they could have really used to go after them. Uh, hold on one second. Apparently Sammy, apparently, Sammy admitted to a murder not in the original 19. Correct. You would be correct about that. Uh, what? See, basically, let me let me try to. I, I hate to say dummy it down for you a bit, but he and he. Okay, number one, Sammy Gravano did not murder anybody but two people. All of this bullshit that he sells, I murdered nineteen people. No, it's nineteen murder conspiracies. In fact, I have the FBI paperwork that says he admitted to taking part in one murder by his own hand. I do not believe the bartender that was killed in Brooklyn, who Sammy was having a sexual affair with because Sammy was by for those that didn't know uh, he, him, him and his brother-in-law had this ongoing thing with this guy and, and Sammy killed him because Sammy was afraid he was going to out Sammy being gay. Okay. That's number one. That murder was also not a part of the indictment. Uh, so number one, we have the, the bartender from Brooklyn that's not in that indictment. And then we have Alan Kaiser. Alan Kaiser was not a part of that indictment either. It just said John Doe in the newspaper because that's what the reporters were told. But he he was never charged in that murder. Now, the question is, why wasn't he? And it's very, very simple. The very simple answer to all of this is, is because the government in no way, shape or form was ever going to allow a jury to hear that Sammy Gravano killed a kid. Bottom line, bottom line. And when they sit there and they sign that agreement with the FBI and, and, and they're supposed to come forth with all their crimes, we know Gravano didn't because we've talked about it on the show a million times. However, it's very easy for him to have put that off on Louis Melito, and he could have told the FBI that. He could have literally said, no, Louis Melito did that, but he was still never charged. The second thing is I ran two different Freedom of Information Act paperwork against uh alan kaiser and sammy gravano the fbi refused to give me anything with either one of them now alan kaiser who was killed by a federal informant right it should there should have been paperwork somewhere but there's not they refused to give me any paperwork on alan kaiser secondly the story that sammy the bull tells is that alan kaiser was running away well if you look at the autopsy report he was shot from behind 
in the back of the head. Sammy tells it, oh, he's running towards the car. We just shot him. It's just not true. It's bullshit. But the reason why they didn't ever charge him is because he has a cooperation agreement. And anytime you sign a cooperation agreement, that trumps state laws. So this idea that um, there's no statute of limitations. Listen, when you work for the government, there's no such thing as statute of limitations anymore. It doesn't matter. You can be an informant and rape and kill 20 children. And as long as the information that you are providing to the federal government, uh, it trumps what you've done, then that's all they care about. But believe me, if John Gotti's lawyers or Frankie Loke's lawyers had known that Gravano did that, believe me, they would have brought it up in their briefings. It would have happened. Uh, so that's the reason why he wasn't charged. And, and nobody in their right mind is going to you know, charge him now. And yeah, I mean, you know, you know, when we talk about murder, like just average people like us, if if I were to murder Chris Gorky or whatever, nobody finds out. Well, 30 years later, if they find out, they could put me in jail. But if I become a government informant and I give the government all this information on uh, somebody like John Gotti, they're going to forgive and forget. So it just um, it, it's just one of those things that's never going to happen. And it's unfortunate. It really is unfortunate. But. When it comes to being an informant, you know, they 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 bypass it. But once again, uh, the one thing that I, I really want to hit home is, is that Sammy Gravano, according to the government, only killed one person by his own hand. So what you get is two sides of Gravano, right? You get him bragging, oh, I killed 19 people. I did this. You really didn't. 19 murder conspiracies. Are, it, conspiracy to murder is different than actually doing it. A conspiracy is like me telling, hey, Gianni, go tell Patrick to go kill Otis. That's, that's the conspiracy. So it, it, it's just, it's unfortunate and it's, it's scumbag thing. And I think you're never, ever going to get justice for that, but it all comes down to, they didn't want a jury to hear that he killed a kid. It's as simple as that, as simple as that. And I think it's a relevant question. Oh, by the way, thank you, Wesley. I think it's a relevant question for people to ask. I really do. I think it's a relevant question, but unfortunately, look who you're talking about. You know what I mean? So, uh, have you seen the new show he's making? Uh, no, I won't watch anything with that guy in it. Uh, Sammy was on Fox News recently. I heard him talking about politics. Yeah, yeah you know why? Because of Giuliani. You know, that's, that's, that's the reason why. Jersey Joe Walcott. He was a good boxer. Yes, uh, he was so he was just a kid, just a kid who Gravano said was a, a drug dealer coming running towards the car. Like no kid at that age is going to run towards a car when two guys are firing. And it's it's kind of like Frank Nitty. How do you how do you how do you kill yourself shooting yourself in the back of the head six times? <laughs> it just it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, why doesn't the family bring a wrong wrongful death suit? Well, I think they did. I think there was a wrongful death suit, but I'm not sure uh, how much the um, the Kaiser family was involved in that. I'm really not sure, but I know that a lot of that, you know, revolved around the book. But uh, listen, what do you think he's doing now? Like, I think they have another son of Sam Law. I mean, he's on Patreon talking about all his crimes and in, in, in profiting. So I think that if Joy Farachi is listening. I think that's that's the next move you make, especially if if he mentions Alan Kaiser. That's exactly what I do. You know, sue him for defamation. Do whatever. Take that money from him. Uh, Anthony Raimondi brags about murdering the Pope, but he wants you to buy his book. Yeah, that guy's a, a fraud. Listen, could you even take anybody seriously that put that guy in their show? I couldn't. You, you put one fraud on after another, it's like nobody's going to take you seriously. Siri, it's just <laughs> I killed the Pope. Fuck out of here. Uh, he said Louis hit him with a shotgun in the chest, and that's when he fell to the ground, put the gun to his head. Yeah, right, right. It's always somebody else's fault. It's always somebody else's fault. That's why I disagree with people that always try to tell me that informants, you know, don't that they're not liars. Of course they are. Of course they will. Uh, you know, uh, listen, I. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, yeah, I don't know. Gotti never feared Sammy at all. Well, he should have. I, I got to admit, he should have. He should have feared him. Uh, and I think if he had moved on Sammy to Bull Gravano, he could have saved himself a lot of 
misery. Uh, what was the reason? Was it mistaken identity? Yeah, that's originally that's what it was. Uh, Sammy had been shot or something to that extent, and he thought he he basically misidentified Kaiser. I don't know how you misidentify a 16-year-old kid, to be honest with you, but, you know. Uh, the only way I can see Alan running at them is if he felt like it was his only chance to live, but given that, I highly doubt it. I think they saw him as a witness to an unsanctioned failed hit, and that's exactly what I think happened. That's exactly what I think happened. Uh, the only thing I would like to see scammy in is his obituary. No, I agree too. I agree too. Grand Avenue, thank you very much. I truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, who would win in a boxing match? Nikki Scarfo or Vinny the Chin? Ooh. I don't know. Are they allowed to bring in weapons and hide them? Because if they could do that, I think Nikki Scarfo would take them. But a straight on boxing match, Vinny the Chin. He was a good boxer, Vinny the Chin. He really was. Uh, once again, guys, I really do appreciate the donations. It, it it makes me feel a lot better about spending a lot of money. Let me tell you, let me tell you. And hopefully, uh, and that's the other thing too. Uh, we are going to start doing this every week on Thursday nights at eight 30 and Sunday nights at eight 30. Uh, that is what we are a hundred percent going to be doing, uh, two lives every week from here on out. Uh, uh, let's see. Did Sammy and Tommy Gambino ever do business? Uh, I'm sure they probably not specifically no, because Tommy Tommy ran the garment district, so they wouldn't have had you know a lot of business. Because Sammy, to my knowledge, didn't have a lot of business in the garment industry. Let me check one thing really quick. Ah, so here's the other thing: uh, we are going to have a big time mob talk radio meet and greet. Uh, if you're curious as to what a meet and greet is, well, guess what. We are about to show you. And now it's time for Mob Talk Radio with your host, Jeff Canarsi.
right. So there you have it. Uh, well, yeah, the landscaping must suck. Uh, yeah, but what we're going to do, uh, it's going to be in Jersey. It's about 10, I don't know, about 20 miles from Philly. Not even. Uh, it's going to be a big house. We're going to get it catered. Uh, cigars, food, music. You never know who's going to come by. Uh, we're going to do two different things. There's going to be people that can spend the night. And then there's people that can come out and hang out during the afternoon. Uh, we are going to try to get all of that together in the next week or so. Uh, <laughs> I want to retract my answer to the quiz. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We've, we've got, a, I've gotten probably 20, 25 emails from people that want to do it, but we have yet to really just say, okay, this is exactly what we're doing because I have to have a minimum number of people in order to make this work financially. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, and hopefully, uh, if any of you guys are in the Jersey, New York, uh, Pennsylvania area, you're going to want to come and do that. You never know who's going to be there. Uh, and I, I just preface that, but it's going to be catered by two different restaurants. Uh, I've already talked to, uh, music's going to be great. Cigars will be good booze. If you just want to hang out and shoot the shit and play bocce, we're going to play bocce too. Uh, because, <laughs> uh, I require strippers, balloons, and midgets. Well, we can invite Jeff Nadu, I'm sure. All right, we're going to close the poll. Let's see what the poll looks like. Okay, I just fudged that. I ended the poll without looking at the fucking numbers. One of you guys can see it, but I think most, the majority of people wanted to show. Okay, there we go. Uh, if someone held a gun to your head and you were forced, who would you be listening to? Uh, it, just shooting themselves in the head. It. Uh, what is that? 65% would rather just kill themselves. 9% would listen to Lee Cole. And 25% would listen to Jeff Nadu. That is inspiring. That that most of you would be willing to commit suicide <laughs> rather than listen to either one of them. That's that makes me feel good. But that's uh that's funny. KXTA, thank you very much. Uh for the donation keep the donations coming guys if you can i really 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 appreciate it uh no he no but you know what though i i jokingly do that but if they were to do the same thing on their channel i would come in last seriously that, i mean that's just how it works and they know that so if they take that personally it's their fucking problem you know but that's you know to me it's just funny uh <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see. I had the first vote. I picked the last choice. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling a lot of people would. Uh, you know, I said Nadu because I didn't care. I didn't know the third option. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wow. The fact that people would just put a bullet in their head rather than deal with any of them. That's that's funny. That is absolutely funny. Uh, Bocce is my game. We play every Monday, Wednesday. You know, the thing is, Gianni, I wanted to go down and play in South Philly with my friend, but my friend's in prison. So I can't go down there and play with them. I'm good at it. Uh, and we're going to give away some, anybody that comes to this is going to get like a free t-shirt, free swag and stuff like that. Uh, and it, it's going to be affordable. Like, don't think that this is, this is not a uh, let's get Jeff Canarsi rich scheme. This is, listen, the house is humongous. It's uh, old house. It's creepy looking on the inside, beautiful views of the water, plenty of room. You can smoke cigars in the house. That's a fucking bonus, right? Um, Hey, Sonny money. How are you? Uh, and so we're going to, uh, we're going to do that. It's look, listen, you want to listen to Dean Martin Sinatra shoot the shit with me for like a day. That's, it doesn't get any better. I don't think I'm, I'm fun to be around. Uh, the guy you see here is a little, little calmer, uh, in person. Uh, but that's, that's what we're going to do. Uh, two of the places that are going to cater are pretty famous places. So it's not like we're going the cheap route. Uh, but it's not going to be, listen, it's not going to break the bank. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now that in reality, because we've got people that want to fly in for this. I'll tell you right now, it is about the same price that you would, it's going to be about the same price that you would pay to stay in a hotel overnight anywhere. Uh, but like I said, the more people we have, the better off we're going to be. And for people who don't want to spend the night in the creepy house with ghosts, uh, then you can just come out for the afternoon and hang out. You know, it'll be, it'll be less expensive that way, but you know, we're catering it. So catering booze, cigars, and that all costs money. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm trying to do this legitimately, uh, before November. So if we can get, you know, 12, 13 people that want to spend the night, 
and then a bunch of people want to come during the day, then it's just a matter of picking the date and and me sitting down with the owners of the house and sorting all of that out. Uh, and for those that are asking, uh, it's there's there's not going to be a, a deposit. It's going to be all up front, uh, just because. I got to take care of, of my end of things, but we're going to have a whole bunch of fun. You never know uh, who's going to show up. It's probably going to be a Saturday starting at like 11 to Sunday to 11 uh, for those that are going to spend the night. Now, for those people that just want to come in for the afternoon, it's going to be something like 11 to three, 11 to four. And then we're going to kick you out because what goes on from four for the rest of the night, I'm not going to tell anybody, but we may have some people showing up to tell some stories. Uh, you never know. Somebody from MobTube might be there. Ooh, who could that be? You never know. You never know who's going to show up. Uh, but I, I got to be honest with you. We have not. I have not. Uh, we're going to put together a package for it. But what I have not done is sat down and done A, B, C, D, and E yet because this has kind of uh, just come around in the last month or so. It's, uh, I think, 12 or 13 bedrooms. 13. Yeah. So that's all. that's a lot of bedrooms. Um, well, Mike, here's what you can do. Uh, email me at mob talk radio show at gmail.com. Give me your name and your phone number and your details. And I'm going to put you on the list. Uh, I would like to get, you know, to spend the night. I'd like to get 15 people, 10, 12, 15 people to, uh, to spend the night. That would be absolutely perfect. Uh, cause we're going to have some really cool shit that's going to go on. And, and, uh, but I also want people just to come out for the day too, if, you know, if they want to, uh, but it's, uh, it's, <laughs> uh, someone from mob to, uh, Oh, bring a shiv. It's not who you'd expect. Uh, yeah, no, Nadu Nadu is not invited. He is not invited to that. Uh, because, uh, I think Hey, there's my guy, Maz Boss. I don't think anybody in their right mind would want to sit within 10 feet of that guy. So, uh, nope, I can't say. I, I I don't talk to RJ, so I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Uh, but I expect that a, that a couple of people uh, that you may know may show. Uh, but like I said, I'm trying to get a list of people who are like definites, like we're 100% want to do this. And then I'll say, okay, by the way, this is what it's going to cost. And then I give them the day. And it's like I said, it's going to be a, a, a Saturday to a Sunday uh, because I think that just works easier for everybody, especially with traffic and stuff like that. Uh, no, I have no, I could tell you for, I have not talked to RJ. I don't even know if RJ knows about this. We've been kind of quiet about it, but like I said, I'd really like to do this uh, before November because the weather changes. And I think it would be so beautiful there with the fall and stuff. And it's not like freezing yet, but it's going to be an interactive thing. We're going to give away T-shirts. I think, I don't want to speak for the Moz boss, but I think the Moz boss might actually be making mozzarella there. So you can learn how to make mozzarella, hang out with me, hang out with Chris Gorky. And like I said, you never know who's going to show up. And I just, I want to keep telling you that. For, and I'm telling you that for a reason. So, uh, honestly, I'd, I'd love to do it in October. I would, but I, I know, you know, there's a lot of people that, that want to fly in for this kind of thing. So it's just a matter of sort of getting enough people on the list that are definitely in. And then I can go back to the people who own the place and say, okay, look, this is, this is what I want to do. And so that's why I picked October. Now, Halloween night would be like freaky, right? That would be freaky, right? But if any of you guys, seriously, are interested in any uh, interested in attending this event? Please do me a favor. Reach out to me at mob here. I'll put it in the goddamn chat. I, mob talk radio show at gmail.com. And please, in the subject field, please put meet and greet so I know where it is. Just give me your name and your phone number. Uh, and just a way I can kind of get in touch with you and, and how many people and whatever. And then probably in the next, I want to say two weeks i'm gonna have a definite i'll have everything ready but i just need to see how many we can uh we can we can actually get in uh so that's what we're gonna try to do i'm looking forward to it i obviously you know when this sort of came up i did not expect 
uh, this many people to want to do it. But uh, I got to thank my buddy and he knows who he is for putting this together for me. And, uh, you know, for, for lunch, it'll be like typical Buffalo wings, stuff like that. Then dinner is going to be like an Italian feast. That's going to be an Italian feast. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you who's catering that because I've already kind of talked to them and, and you might know who they are, but, uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time to hang out and everything like that. Uh, other than that, you know, if you guys got mob questions or if you guys want to come on and shoot the shit, uh, the link is in the chat and, uh, we can talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Although I saw something a second and a second ago in the chat, something about a cage in the front yard. Hold on. Where is that? Oh, where was it? I can't find it. Oh, there's my boss. How are you, buddy? Uh, I saw somebody say, oh, yeah, you need to put a cage match in the front lawn. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah. I mean, I'm not going to turn away, you know, I'm not going to turn away somebody that wants to come. I'm really not, but I don't want somebody like Jeff to do it that either. I'm just being honest with you. You know what I mean? I just, um, no, hell no. Cause I'll go to jail. All right. So here's something else. Uh, if you guys are interested, uh, I have an award-winning podcast and you can check that out at mob talk radio show dot dot com. Uh, if you want, it's $10 a month. We do four or five shows. I believe we did 18 episodes of the Kennedy crime family. It's over 30 some hours of uh, content. And we've been uploading that on YouTube. And the reason why I want to do that is we're trying to get people over onto the other site. Uh, we talk about a lot of stuff on the other site. It, you know, I talk about, about really a lot of, uh, uh, how to say this? I talk about a lot of personal stuff that I would never talk about here about my past, how I grew up. Uh, open book. Uh, I just don't do that on YouTube because I know what happens when you do that. Uh, for those of you that are in the chat, have you guys, did you guys watch the latest podcast we just dropped? The latest podcast we dr just dropped is on the Philadelphia Mob Wars, and it's actually a podcast you can watch. It's like watching a live right here. So if you guys have, uh, if you guys have watched that, can you let me know what you thought about that? I'm just curious. Also, if you guys have been listening to, uh, the Kennedy crime family, everybody did everybody like that, you know, like, do you mean Patrick, do you mean literally physically or just saying one thing and doing the other, you know, I don't know if we, we probably have to, we'd have probably have to get a really tall ladder, a really tall ladder. Uh, Mrs. Can't be wrong. It's your event. You can have a right to pick and choose who you want there. Yeah, no, absolutely. We don't want any fucking nuts coming there. And, and, and I'm going to tell you why this would be a bad idea for anybody that thinks, oh, this is how I'll get to him. This is not the place you want to fuck around. You understand what I mean by that? There, you just, you don't want to create an issue there. Trust me. The water's right there. You won't come back. Uh, will you have Millie's ice cream at the meet and greet? If so, what do I say? No. No, no. And it's funny, Billy, because I thought for sure you would have guessed the two people that are catering. I thought for sure you would have been all over that. I wish you the best. MTR, take care. Yeah, you too, buddy. Take care, uh, Sunny Money. All right. I love the visual aspect, but I'm weighing that between the three-hour podcast. I love the long podcast. Yeah, see, that's my thing. Uh, on, a, on a regular podcast, I could just sit here and do my thing. When it's a visual one, it's like, it's a lot of work. It's a lot different sort of beast, you know? And this is actually, I got to be honest with you. This is the first live I've done where I felt comfortable ever, ever. No, there will not be a cookie puss. And I think I know what you're referring to. I love the Kennedy crime family stuff. Cool. I don't have a desktop of the audio of this week's show. Well, Donald, check this out. Go over on YouTube. And go to our uh, videos. We just uploaded the 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th episode of the Kennedy Crime Show. And if you go over one more, we uploaded a free copy of the podcast. Just because we want people to kind of see what we're doing. So if you head over to our YouTube uh, videos, 
Uh, and it may be under playlists and mob talk radio. Just go down. You'll see, it'll say Philadelphia mob war, click on it. You can watch. So there you go. That way I, I'm at least you have a different option. And if, if you don't have a desktop, Donald, all you have to really do, uh, well, yeah, you're right. Well, you know what, Donald, we can figure out a way for you to get it anyway. If you don't have a desktop, we'll figure something out for you. Uh, let's see. I like the last podcast. I listen at work though. Watching isn't an option for me. Yeah. I would rather listen to stuff myself to be honest with you, but sometimes you like to watch stuff. Nothing. Hey guys, who am I? You guys ready for an imitation? You guys want to press the number one. If you want to hear a funny imitation of somebody, Dean, I see in the background. Give me a second. Press the number one if you want to hear a funny ass fucking imitation. Yeah, the Appalachian meeting files are fantastic. All right, I'm starting to see ones. Chris, do you want to come on? Gorky, you want to come on too? That way we can get two of you lined up really quick because I got Dean in the background. Ron Previty. All right. Who am I? I want you guys all to put who I am in the chat. And welcome to another episode of the Mob Talk. Sit down. Who talks like that? Hey, welcome to Mob Talk Radio. This is Jeff Canorsi. Okay, and welcome to another edition of the Mob Talk. Sit down. Get the fuck out of here. And get a goddamn booster seat for your chair. You look like you're sitting on the fucking floor and the camera's in the ceiling, you prick. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I am going to bring on the Evervescent, Chris Gorky. Hi, I'm Evervescent, man. And we're going to bring on Dean. What's up, guys? What's going on, guys? Hey, Dean, what's up, man? How you doing, man? I just want to say, Jeff, man, I love the show, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, I, I listen. I appreciate you. I mean, anybody that uh, any look, look at this. You know what? I I know. I you know. I don't touch my phone, right? I'm getting all kinds of emails about the meet and greet. Oh, you can't. Oh, there's my kid. Oh, this stupid fucking screen. Whatever the fuck. Don't that's worry. Good. That's all right, man. That's good. Now my girlfriend's figuring that out right now, Jeff and me. Do what? I said my girlfriend is figuring that meet and greet out for me right now. All right. Yeah. It's cool. listen. It's not going to be. It's not going to be expensive. It really isn't. Uh, it, it's. It's mainly just. You know how it is. Anytime you got a bottom line, it's. Mm -hmm. a how do we meet the criteria with as less people as possible for a low the cost? Because I don't know where everybody's coming from. I got a guy that wants to fly in from Chicago for fuck's sakes. Another guy from London. <laughs> and it's like you want to. You want to fly in from the UK, for like a one day event? Are you out of your mind? And he's like, well, I was. Yeah, so listen, if people want to do that, I mean, everybody's going to get autograph stuff, T-shirts, all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. So I, it's not going to be a cheap event, you know, nice booze, really expensive cigars. It'll and really uh, the opportunity hey, Jeff, to see what I don't care what, if I have to sell my condo, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody can see what a fucking animal I am in real life. <laughs> uh, let me answer this question. Jess Rem. Yes, we are going back to the horror podcast as well, and they will be visual. They will be free. It's just that, uh, let me just explain really quick. Uh, one of the problems is, is when you invest all your money into like a professional film cameras and, and lenses and, and all of this kind of stuff, you have to take a backseat to something. And I had to let that go because the amount of research that I do for this show, if I do a three hour podcast on a Friday, the reality is, is I spend probably 40 hours doing research. So it's like, I don't have time to like say, okay, now I want to talk about the Loch Ness monster blowing a goat. Let me go find out all the information <laughs> about that. So it's, oh my God, you guys. So this is disgusting. You know, Chris <laughs> Dorky, you know where I'm going with this, I, right? I, as soon as you said blow a goat, I thought of this guy that you sent me the link to. All right. So I, I'm going to see if I funny. can... I, I'm gonna see if I can pull this this video up really quick. Just just give me one second to kind of pull this up. Um, oh fuck, you know I don't even have it. I'm gonna have to look really quick. Just uh, Chris, talk for a minute. I'll be right there. Yeah, no problem. So check this out. The thing with the meet and greet, we just need mm -hmm. I don't know maybe four or five more people to make it a go. So really appreciate 
more people being interested, like Dean and maybe Jamie, whoever else. But here's the good thing. For people that don't live in the area, never really been to Philly, this place is only like 18 miles or so outside of Philadelphia. Now, we're it's only a one-day thing, so we're just going to do what we got to do around the house. But the next day, if people on their own wanted to visit Philly a little bit and chill, we could do that, you know? I mean, hey, Chris, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, hey, this goes to you as well, Jeff. As far as the catering, I don't eat pork, so is that going to be a problem, Jeff? You don't eat pork? Nah. You can eat pasta and chicken, right? I am Italian and black. Absolutely. Well, then there you go. You get the most of <laughs> All right, guys, I, I just want to show you guys this screen thing. For those of you that know, over on the Horror Podcast, we covered Bigfoot. And for a while, we did kind of a comedy podcast uh, making fun of Bigfoot. But this shit is no joke. This is funny. Hold on. Let me let me take off the um, the banner really quick. Oh, come on. Hold on one second. Can you guys read that? Mm, Bigfoot. It's a little small, but we could. I mean, we could. Bigfoot masturbates. Bigfoot <laughs> mas Bigfoot masturbates. Man terrified. Police have been called. Major university to investigate. This guy legit. <laughs> look, look at this guy. He goes on and on for like two and a half minutes talking about being in his yard. His dogs are in heat, and Bigfoot runs over to him and just starts. Tossing it, <laughs> and he's and, and to make matters worse, to make matters incredibly fucking worse, this asshole has another one where he talks about a Bigfoot raping him, and you have to. You, oh, that's my book. You guys don't want to see that. Hold on a second. How the fuck do I get this present? There we go. Um, it just goes to show that that people are just. Fucking batshit crazy. You should have played a small clip from the from the video. I don't because a guy I, I don't because he says filthy shit. I mean it's bad enough yeah, that I I, I say it. filthy shit, but I, I really don't want to listen to a guy describe like Bigfoot tossing his cookies all over his fucking lawn. <laughs> it was fucking that was hilarious, man. But the other one's better though. He's like, Yeah, it looked like a hairy Russian woman coming out of the woods, and I'm like yeah. And I have nothing to protect me. What do I do? What do I do? I just let Bigfoot have her way with me. <laughs> she hey, did hey, it. What did he say? She got my seed and she took off. Yeah. He's, <laughs> how long you and, how, how long you and Jeff been friends? What what's that again? He I he said, asked how long, how long we've been friends. Yeah. Us too. Well, I mean, I've known him for God, what about five years now or so, but probably the past two years is one. Tell him how you met me. That story's pretty funny. Oh, my God. So I know for, people heard it, but for, so for people that are new, what happened was uh, a guy that used to live near Jeff in Virginia, for some reason, just has a pure hatred for Jeff, and Jeff never did, did anything to the guy. So when I first started listening to Jeff's show, it was on YouTube, and I didn't have a Facebook account. And to ask mm -hmm. Jeff a question on Facebook, you had to have a Facebook account, because that's where he did the questions. So... I went, opened up a Facebook account that I never had, asked Jeff a question. Now I had like one or two people on there total because I just opened it. So I, I never spoke to Jeff in my life. I'm at home around 5.30 after work, listening to the show, kind of half asleep, about ready to doze off. And Jeff calls this one hater to play live what he goes through and how, how he gets attacked by these people. And as I'm listening to it, this guy started screaming my name over the friggin' show. I have no idea who the guy was at the time, never spoke to Jeff. And here what happened was this guy thought Jeff was making <laughs> fake, fake Facebook accounts and used my name to make a fake account to ask himself a question to boost his channel. And it wasn't true at all. And I mean, can you imagine never meeting a guy in your life and you just happen to listen to the show and randomly mm -hmm. just your name being screamed over the fucking TV? But that's what happened. And I emailed Jeff. I said, yo, man, I, you know, obviously this guy's full of shit. Here I am. I'm a real person. <laughs> from there. But that's what happened. It, it was nuts. Y'all got a good friendship, man. I really respect it. 
Yeah, that's cool. It's just hey, we're just regular guys, man. You know, we just shoot the shit, fuck around, talk See, about. To it. him, you just a regular guy to you. But to me, yo, and I'm not saying this to, to, to kiss your ass, Jeff, but you're a fucking hero to me. I've been listening to you for like since YouTube before you had any of this stuff, man. Yeah, no, I, I just meant we're just in general regular guys. But yeah, Jeff's the OG of all the mob stuff on YouTube. Well, I appreciate it. I really do. I mean, it, it's funny to 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 be on YouTube ten years, and mm -hmm. I took I think I took two years off, but uh, which was not an exile on my behalf. It's what my 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 family made me do. Uh, but it was funny because two years ago. I'm really still the only one on here doing this. And then all of a sudden it like everybody starts coming out the woodwork. They act like attacking informants is something new and they don't do it. it and the thing is they don't do it right. You got to use paperwork. Paperwork's the only thing that really does anything. And I think that most, maybe not all of them, but I think 90% love rats. And I, I just, I just don't understand that. I never hey, have. Jeff, have you have you ever noticed like in a lot of their stories, it's the same goddamn story, just worded different. The same goddamn story, just worded different. They recycle it's each other's stories. You'll notice if one mob content creator does a story on a specific topic, then you'll see two, three other ones do the same type, just do the same story the same week. It's you know, they're not original. Well, anybody that uh, I think anybody that, that listens to my podcast knows I don't do anything that's normal, <laughs> you know. No, I mean, hey, you, like you said, you took a stance. You don't platform rats, and you stuck to it the whole time. That's uh, commendable. You're only one that does. Well, it, listen, it, it's not to it, listen, and, and everybody's got skeletons, right? I'm not going to say I never did because I did when I first started, and. I needed a way to get the most impact as quick as I could. And that was the way I thought that I should do it, even if I had sort of ambiguity against doing it. And I paid for it dearly. Mm, like, yeah. I, you know, I, I see like a lot of people like FBS, you know, he takes more shit than I ever took. But the difference between me and him is these people went to my mother's house. Yeah. Wow. Like they took it to a whole nother fucking level. In fact, the hater I'm referring to telling the story was one of the people that went to your mother's house. Yeah, and they stuck a camera in her face and, you know, all crazy, kinds of shit man. like that. But the other thing, too, uh, I think for me that differentiates me between everybody else is, and, and I try to say this in kindness to people that, that do have informants on, is that there's always three sides to a story. There's your side, their side, and then there's the fucking truth. Mm-hmm. And the reality is, is that if you're going to platform an informant and you're not going to tell the other side of that, then you're not a proponent of the truth. You're a proponent of a lie. Hmm. And that's just the way I see it. Because if I came on here and said, uh, you know, Joey Merlino is, is innocent. He's never done a thing wrong. The first thing people are going to say to me is, then why did he go to jail twice? Why did <laughs> he go to, you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't make anybody out to be a saint, but I think if you're going to be convicted, you need to be convicted on the merits of the laws you broke and not on the Absolutely. words of somebody else. Absolutely. You know, it's just kind of the way I see it. Uh, someone went to the mother's house. Some scumbags called FBS's mother. Yeah, they've done all that. Yeah, I had uh, George Anastasia teaches a class. Well, you know what? I don't want to go there. That's just going to get me in trouble. But uh, somebody used an <laughs> author to get to my brother. So, wow, yeah, and that's crazy. Hey, Jeff, I'm surprised you didn't just lock up. Somebody go to my mom's house. It's, it's all bets is off now. Well, that's kind of the thing, right? Is for me, it's like, do I want to go to jail over that? You know, now will there be a day that I run into said person? Yeah, absolutely, and I'll handle it then. Okay. You know, but somebody that's just, you know, kind of want to hear it, wants to hear themselves talk. And like, I got him on because I, I taped it. I taped it when I called him because I wanted to prove to everybody how crazy he was. I said, why are you doing this? He's like, because it's fun. Yeah, And I'm like, like oh, he said, I, I, I have no reason. I don't have any reason. No, I have no reason to do it. Like, this is a I guy that I didn't hang out with. I didn't even I knew through somebody else. Hello, goodbye once or twice. And all of a sudden he felt like. He was my best friend and he knew everything about me. He said my father died of AIDS and it, like my father died what? of cancer. Oh yeah. It was just all sorts of stupid shit. 
Yeah. You're a better man than me, Jeff. <laughs> well, not always, because I think Chris can tell you he, he sees the other side of that, and that's not exactly the, the, the funnest. It's not easy being friends with me when I'm like that, you know? Everybody has a line that if certain people cross, it's just mm-hmm. you know, human nature, people are going to react a certain way, you know? Okay. It's, that's just how it is. So, Dean, obviously, you're a, a pretty a mob fan, right? You like the genre? Absolutely. Who, 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 what are some of your favorite like mob topics or, or like mob guys or bosses? Um, actually, I'm glad you brought that up to me, man. I actually was going to save this question for Jeff, and I'm still going to save it. So, I'm just going to answer your question, all right? Believe it or not, yo, it's John Gotti. I just, my son right here, he'll tell you, who, who do I love the most? John Gotti. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Hey, actually, there you I'm go. a big John Riggy fan as well. John Riggy, I don't think he was about enough. Nah, he was the man. That, yeah. that guy was uh, something else. And because something of you, Jeff, I bought all those books. I bought the Nocturne. I bought the Diva. Uh, you got the Diva Cop, the Canty Family. Yeah, man, you're reaching people, Jeff. Slowly, uh, slowly but surely. You know what? I like John Gotti too. I've never said that I didn't. I think anybody in their right mind who's a fan of the genre can can acknowledge a couple of things. Okay. Is number one, the guy had a swagger. He was who he was, good, bad, and indifferent. He was always going to be who he was. He thumbed his nose at the government. However, the flip side of that is he kind of got himself in a little bit of trouble. But that's just the reality. That's just the, the reality of the life. And that doesn't diminish uh his street credibility because I don't I, I gotta be honest with you. I think you would be very hard pressed to name three guys who had the street credibility that guy did. Hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, yeah. and, and and for all of his misgivings and his mistakes and, and maybe some of the lesser known, I don't want to say stupid because that's not a nice word to say, but for all the mistakes he made, I could name 55 other people who weren't a quarter of the man that that guy was. Mm-hmm. You know, and, yeah. and so from that aspect, I can understand it. But I also have issues with like things like he forces his brother to not take a plea deal, but but he took a plea deal himself. Well, can I ask you something on that, Jeff? But wouldn't that yeah. be something? Maybe he took that that role of not taking plea deals, yeah, in his younger days. But as he got older, he probably said no plea deal. Well, no, the and, the and that's that's a fantastic argument, and that's the correct argument to make because he did it his first or I think it was his first or his second bid going to prison. I think he was going to Lewisburg. Uh, Mm -hmm. And he was younger and he was not a captain. He wasn't anything. And so maybe for him then in that time, he had a young family. And and so that makes sense. But I think his brother, you know, I I get it. You know, don't admit to it. Don't admit to it. But Mm -hmm. Jeannie could have ended up doing 15 years and gotten out instead sat there for 30. But Mm -hmm. he never bellyached about it. Never said a thing about it. Just did his time. You know, Jeff, does he get his position back? I uh, I'm not gonna go there. Gotcha. Say no more. I understand. I, I was testing you, Jess. That's why I'm just testing you. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I I can tell you certifiably that. Uh, no, I can't tell you anything certifiably. Never mind. I, I don't want to say anything uh, about him uh, other than to say that he was a shot caller in prison for a reason. Okay. So there you go. Understandable. You know, a lot of guys Who's your were. Favorite boss. Mine or? Yeah, yours, Chris. Who's your favorite? Well, Jeff knows that. Uh, my favorite boss is Russell Buffalino because he, he mm. honestly just lives right down the road for me, or lived right down the road for me, I should say. Over 30 years, you know, quiet. I, I got intrigued about Buffalino because, you know, growing up, you heard a little things, and I just thought he's this little mob guy in this area, no big deal. But when the book came out, I heard you paint houses. I was absolutely blown away of how powerful he actually was. Like, wow. like I, I was amazed at his power. But, uh, you know, as far as taking the plea deals, like, it, it, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. It's, if I'm a boss, as long as someone's not ratting, the people should be allowed to fight their cases how they want. You know, like, I just think it's wrong for them to force people to take plea deals. You know, mm-hmm. if he wants to take that, stuff, that tough t- stance for himself, screw you, I'm not admitting to anything. Okay, that's you. But you should allow your men to do 
you know, when they're fighting for their lives and going away for a long time, they should have the option to take a plea deal as long as they're not getting anybody in trouble or rotting. Gotcha. I agree. Yeah, my, I agree. But, you know. I agree with that. As long as someone's getting jammed up, what's the problem? Yeah, right, right. That's kind of how I see it. But I don't know. You know, we'll, uh, we'll see. You know, I read Agnostic's comments. Every other comment by Agnostic is hilarious, man. <laughs> he kills me. <laughs> I fucking love you too, man. For real, man. So let me let me address this just really quick. So wrenches. Anybody who has a wrench, if somebody comes in spewing political bullshit, do me a favor, time them out, warn them that we don't talk about politics, and if they do it again, just throw them out. Just ban them. Hmm. I don't care. Jeff, I can't backstage here. I can't get to anyone. It's okay. I got I got people in there that got wrenches. That, yeah, I'm that, just giving you a heads up. It, that's all. Carlos was the best wrench I've ever seen. Hmm. That guy's on top of everything, man. Hey, Jeff, can what? I ask you one more question? Yeah, yeah, feel free. I always hear you talk about the Tony Salerno situation, right? Like, he wasn't the boss. But honestly, why did it matter, though, whether he was the boss or not? It's a fucking hundred other things he was going to get convicted of. Let's say no, I don't you're right. No, you're right about that. But the, but the the onus of the indictment itself was based on a ruling panel and a ruling commission. So okay. you would have a great argument in court right there with what you just said. But yeah. on the flip side of that, but now look at Rusty Rustelli. Everybody knew mm. Rustelli was running running his family, but they forgave that because they were told that the Bonanos no longer had a seat on the commission. And that's the only reason. Why, but he still got nailed in the end. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's a good argument. But I think that if the totality is going to be we are going only after the heads of the five families, then based on that, if I'm a defendant, I'm like, but wait a second. <laughs> I'm not the boss of anything. You know, so and why they, do you think they that, didn't go right? after him then? Why didn't they? Rostelli? They, no, Jeff, why do you think they didn't go after the chin? And, they, and you know that for a fact they knew he was the boss. That's a good question. I think the reality is they probably couldn't get enough on him. I was just mm. going to say that. That would be my guess. If they too. had Now, listen, if they had 10 guys come forward and say, hey, listen, he's not the boss. Like, Vinny Cafaro wasn't good enough for them. If they had had okay. 10 guys that came across and said, listen, you got it wrong. Uh, Vinny the Chin is the boss. Believe me, he'd have been indicted. <laughs> mm. You know? Yeah, it, it, it's one yeah. thing to prove a guy's a boss, but it's another thing to connect the crimes to him. You know, and prove it. That's... That's why Genevieve's had these, these, these front men. Look at this one. My favorite gangster is Carmine Galante. Hmm. How's what? Frank Costello's mausoleum doing? Still have any skid <laughs> Listen, if you think about it, if you think about it for a second, this is a guy who basically, you know, gets out of prison, arrives, and begins systematically killing captains in the Gambino crime family and they do nothing for months. That guy had some balls. Hmm. Yeah. That oh, guy had some balls. Absolutely. He is almost too careless. I think he started killing Gambinos and killing everyone. Yeah, he didn't want shit. And it was, was drugs. He didn't want to share in the profits. Yeah. You know, hey, Jeff, but, wasn't his scenario the same as, as Vito Genovese though? As he way? went away, he went away as the underboss. And then he come back, and the yep. boss is not there, so he should have had the position. He was right to make that state. Well, yeah, and and I agree with you, but I think the problem is it's so political. It's so political mm. because everybody wants to have a guy who they can rub the wrong, the right way, right? So if you look mm. at the 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 pattern commission, like best example of that would be you know when Tommy Lucchese and Carlo Gambino were together, and then you mm. have Genovese who kind of sides up next to them. Joe Bonanno freaks out immediately. Uh, Joe Profaci freaks out and mm. rightfully so because now they know okay it's sort of like how when John Gotti initiated the, the third Colombo war by saying that Carmine Persico is a rat he does mm. that because he knows okay I got Joey Messino who I get along with we can bring them that's a powerhouse uh, if I can get the Colombos on my side we can overrule the Genovese's and it's, it's just it's all power plays all power plays mm. I didn't think about it like that because if a commission comes to a vote, right, and there's five families and it goes two, two one way, two the other way, now you have a fifth family who's got to make a vote. And you mm -hmm. want that, you want that, that edge going into a mm -hmm. meeting like that. But, but I think 
I'd like to say that post 19, I'll say post 2001, 2002, I don't, I don't think the commission unilaterally does anything anymore. I really okay. don't, but I could be wrong. I've never been invited to a commission meeting. <laughs> well, Not yet I, I got a question for you, Jeff, and I know yeah. this is probably just bullshit. Like a lot of people have, get stuff wrong. I was reading the comments on that one guy's chat. I was telling you earlier and, and a guy who goes by history and organized crime. I don't know if he has a channel. I don't think he does, but that was his handle. Anyways, he commented about, he said that uh, Lucky Luciano and people close to him could have taken out Vito Genovese, but Russell Buffalino stepped in because he was friends with Genovese and shared business, and that's what saved Vito from, from Luciano and them killing him. I, I don't Hmm. Well, at that point, wasn't that strong? I don't think he was. Just no, and you have to look, you have to look at the time period too. Yeah. When, so when does Genovese? Genovese becomes boss in what fifty seven, right? Yeah. Right, and then they have the Havana Conference in fifty seven, and it's mm -hmm. not long after that the Genovese drops the diamond Luciano, and he's fucked. Mm -hmm. uh, Russell Buffalino wouldn't have had. It. Listen, if Lucky Luciano wanted Genovese dead, he would have been dead. Right, because Buffalino didn't become boss till 57 himself, and at the time, uh, Luciano had more power. You know, I mean, it's I, I don't think Buffalino was saved. And, and, and the other thing is, too, Russell Buffalino is not going to get involved in a pissing contest like that. Okay, he's in Pittston. What the fuck does he give a shit what they're doing there? That wasn't going to affect his union stuff, not at all. And why would he side with Vito when he's pissed off that they took yeah. out Anastasia? He wouldn't. He would have gone. He would have gone wherever the base would have gone to okay. protect his, to protect his interests. Right. Which, you know? which makes which makes sense. Now Magadino. Now with Stefano Magadino. Now that would have been a very interesting move if Magadino had just. You imagine if Magadino like just finally has enough with with uh, Joe Bonanno and just kills him. Could have saved everybody a lot of trouble. He's the one guy they should, definitely should have took out. That would have saved a lot of headaches. You made a, gate, a great point yesterday on the um, on your live yesterday, Jeff, about that. About they should have gave him that. Oh, actually, that was Maliaco. And they oh, should have yeah, gave him that. Maliaco, yeah. They should have. They should have. That I was. You, that was perfect the way you put that in the plate. Now you don't get the position, but you got to take him out if you still want to earn. That was perfect. Well, and, and, and what and, and what Dean is, is talking about is when Joe Magliacco and Joe Bonanno decided to move on the commission, they needed somebody to do it. They put Joe Colombo in charge of the murders instead of doing probably what he should. Well, first of all, I, I think he made the right choice. He goes to Carl Gambino. He explains what's going on. Immediately, the commission wants to react, and they send for both of them. Bonanno takes off to Montreal and starts all kinds of trouble with Vic Catroni. Because he's mm -hmm. hiding out. Magliaco comes front and center, admits his role. Uh, and basically they find him. I think it was something like 50,000 and told him you're fucking done with the life. You get involved again. We'll kill you. What they should have done and what I suggested what they should have done is find the guy anyway, but mm -hmm. tell him, listen, you're not going to control your own family, but you can still earn and do your thing. But you got to kill Joe Bonanno or you send him or you send him to, to Montreal to meet with Vic Catroni and handle it. Because mm. at one point they were going to kill Vic Catroni over this because they sent over uh, Sam D. Cavalcante and, and everybody else to Montreal to talk to Joe Bonanno, pleading with him to come back to the United States, but he wouldn't because he was afraid he was going to die. And the minute that he said, I don't abide by anything I don't believe in and I don't believe in a commission, he should have been killed just based on that. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the reasons why they did not move on him had a lot to do with Carlo Gambino. Hmm. You know, I think Gambino, I, I think it would have presented too much heat. And I, I don't know if Carlo knew or not, but I think at the time, uh, I think Carlo had suspicions that both uh, his son, Bill and him were talking to the feds and they were, mm -hmm. and that was, that was as early as 64. Wow. So, uh, but yeah, Bill Bonanno was, was giving them all the information and then, uh, Joe Bonanno doubled down on it. Uh, and I think, you know, Carl was a shrewd guy and it seems like he knew how to read people really well, but sometimes you have to like use that to your advantage. And I think that's one thing that Carlo mm -hmm. did especially well. 
Yeah, uh, let's great. see. Did John Gotti ever cons- consider killing Chen Gigante? No. He wouldn't have lived three days if he tried to. First of all, he would have never been able to pull that off, number one. And number two, I, I hate to, to be the, the bearer of bad news, but I think that John Gotti was intimidated of Vinny the Chen. Hmm. Not maybe as a man-to-man, like in the streets, but I think he knew that push come to shove, you know, uh, Vinny the Chin wasn't going to fuck around. You know. So did Gravano make that shit up then, Jeff? Do what? Did, did Sammy Gravano make that shit up then? Talking about John Gotti trying to leave I think so. Kid? I think I so. A lying-ass cocksucker. And think about Gravano it. Gravano got caught in a lot of lies. Well, let, let's just play, let, let's play this out this way. Okay. So what we do know is this, is that Gravano was involved in narcotics with Gath Pipe Grasso. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, Andrew Ruggiero was involved in narcotics, and him mm-hmm. and Gathpipe were fighting over turf and rackets and et cetera. Angelo Ruggiero hires Jimmy Heidel, who was Danny Marino's nephew, to kill Casso, and they botch it up. So they already had this nasty, fuck you kind of thing going on, and Ruggiero ends up getting shelved, and mm. Casso is still pissed about being shot. It wasn't it, to him. It was anybody that think about it for a second. If John Gotti does nothing, John Gotti, by the terms of the streets, should have killed Angelo Ruggiero for what he did. for moving mm-hmm. on another made guy in another family. That's a death sentence. He doesn't. So what's to stop Gaspipe from saying, I'm going to kill every single fucking one of these guys, which is why. Uh, when the bomb went off and killed Frankie De Chico, and everybody keeps trying to say Vinny the Chin did that, they're out of their minds. Hmm. They're out of their minds because Vinny the Chin, first of all, would never have used a car bomb in a public area. He's not stupid. He's not going to do that. That was a gas pipe Casso thing. And the funniest hmm. part about it is, guess who manufactured that bomb? Somebody who was on the Gambino payroll. What? Yeah. The guy who put the bomb under the car was again on the Gambino payroll. He was a dirty cop. Wow. Furthering that is the bomb had to be detonated by remote. In other words, you have to see somebody go into the car and the Lucchese, uh, the Lucchese clubhouse was a block and a half away. How do you misread John Gotti from Frankie to Chico? Hmm. You can't. They look totally polar opposite. Right. And this was Casso getting even. Hmm. Getting even for everything And everybody always says no it was Vinny the Chin Listen let me tell you something did John Gotti hide No Did he hide in his house No He went everywhere didn't give a fuck So what makes anybody think That if Vinny the Chin wanted him dead He couldn't have just had it done It would have hmm. been easy Easy Without easier, easier than hitting Castellano now, Jeff, is this predate before all the, the the media all over John Gotti? Could it have been done? Because you know, once he became John Gotti's celebrity, I don't think you had any way of killing him. Just too many people around him at all times. No, and, and and that's that's another good argument is that he wouldn't have been able to. It's just too much scrutiny, too much media. But there was there would have been nothing stopping somebody from riding up on John Gotti in the middle of the night in a car and blowing his fucking head off either. Mm-hmm. No, you're right about that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and so I think that. Gaspipe Castle is the guy that really had something to gain by that. And if, if Vinny the Chin knew, then he just sat back and watched because that was the perfect mm. thing. Let them kill each other and I'll take over. And that's basically what ended up happening. Mm-hmm. And at one point, Joey Messino was going to kill John Gotti. So Wait, he had, I thought they had an alliance. They did for a while until some things went bad and Joey Messino really started gaining a lot of power and weight. He, I mean, other than physically, but <laughs> he started gaining a lot of power and had a lot of friendships, and he started seeing John Gotti more as uh, a liability to organized crime, which is why Joey Messino shut down all the social clubs because he didn't want guys meeting in one place, and he didn't want anybody from the Bonanos working with the Gambinos in any fashion. Hmm. Uh, and, and so that, at one point, Joey Messino, I think, was 100% going to take him out. But it is what wow. it is. Live by the gun, uh, live by the gun, die by the gun. Wait, you think Messino had the balls to try something like that against the 100%. Gambino? Absolutely. I mean, look what they did with the three captains' murders. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's true. But that's in house, though, Jeff. I agree with you that it's in house. But I think if Joey Messino thought John Gotti was going to get in his way, mm-hmm. absolutely, they'd have gone to war. Now, 
would the Bonanos have won that war? No, I don't think so. Because in that time period, the Gambinos were the one family you did not want to fuck with on any level because they were shooters. Hmm. You know, New York City was the wild, wild west in the 80s. I got a question. What, uh, so you know how supposedly Sam Giancana threw a grenade in Magadino's house about the, <laughs> about Appalachian? Well, that's the story, but. Well, right. I mean, I don't know if it's true or not. I, I don't but, believe that. Oh, because I was going to say, like, wouldn't he have to get permission from the commission to do that? Do you think that Sam Giancana ever listened to anybody? No, that's that was the next thing I was going to hmm. say. No, and, and, here, that, and, that, and that call would have come from Paul Rica or Tony Accardo. Right. Mm. Giancana was just a front guy, but that's not who did that. I think you know who did that. Think about it. Who did Magadino have all the fucking issues with? Well, cousin. Joe Bonanno. His cousin. 100%. And what better than to send some nut there to throw a grenade through the neighbor's house and then try to blame it on everybody else? Because they were fighting over Canada. Right. That, that, was, that was the big thing. Oh, well, Banano was sly and as, as much of a rat, rat moves behind the scenes as they come. Another <laughs> thing that I was thinking about. So when Tony Caponegro thought he had the okay from Funzie Thierry to kill Bruno, and right. then he did it. And then he went before – everybody keeps saying he went before the commission, but you only hear of the Genovese people being there. Where was the input on the Gambino? No, everybody thing? was there. Everybody oh, was there. Oh, they were? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't – yeah. Because every you, time hey, the story, it's like it was just, you just hear of the Genovese being there. Well, who That's do, a who good do? question, Chris. Yeah. That was a good question, man. That was That was a good question right there. I'm sorry for interrupting you, Jay. No, 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 you, 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 mean, you mean like about Cap and Agro. Yeah, that was a good one right there because I you, always wondered that same thing. So who who do you think was who was the most powerful boss in New York at the time of that murder? What year is Paul it? Paul Castellano or Chin? Probably Chin. Oh. I thought Paul had the commission. Hold on. We now I have to look up the murder date. Hold on. No, I, I mean I I don't after Gambino was gone. So it would have I been. Don't... It would have been 1980. Okay, so that's okay. So I was right in the way I was going to go. So it was 1980. Do you really think Paul Castellano was going to get involved in that? Nah. Well, I'm sure he probably didn't want to, but I'm just saying how people say that it was a commission vote, and he went right. So you would have had. You would have had. You know, Paul Castellano. Uh, you would have had Vinny the Chin, and automatically those two are are going to have them killed and who's gonna who's gonna but who would who would argue against that that's the thing though Jeff. i thought the i thought the commission is not supposed to be personally based i thought it's supposed to be like no no hard feelings it's business and you tell well, me and nobody in that room believed him everybody believed he did that on their own come on man no, i'm sure they did i'm sure they i'm sure so so let me let me rephrase it so anytime it, it seems like the commission acts like they want to go by the codes and the rules when it applies to something they want to favor, you know, that's fair enough to say when Angelo Bruno's killed every single one of those motherfuckers, if, if let's just pretend they were all irate, they all on the backside of that say, uh Oh, Atlantic city. Now hmm. that's in the open. that's where we really want to go. Hmm. So, yeah, did Caponegro get what was coming to him? Yeah, and Hafunzi Terry set him up for it because those two right. had had a huge beef going back 20 fucking years about North Jersey. Hmm. And so when there was a sit-down between Caponegro and Thierry, the commission uh, sided with Caponegro, and Funzi Thierry never forgot it. He was irate. So years later, when uh, Caponegro goes to him to get support to kill Angelo Bruno, of course he's going to tell him, yeah, sure, do it. Why not? Not a problem. And he does, and when he goes to the commission meeting, he's stunned when he says, I never told you that. You're out of your fucking mind. And I'm sure the guy's sitting in the room. Face. I'm sure they all knew that Funzy Thierry set him up. Mm. But what the fuck do they care? This guy didn't have a right to kill a boss under any circumstance. And two, Atlantic City. Hmm. Atlantic City. Because if you look, if you move forward a few years, Nicky Scarfo, originally Chin wants to put him in ahead of Testa. 
Mm-hmm. But Scarfo, I think, senses there's still heat on the street. Guys aren't done mm-hmm. shooting each other. So he's like, you know what? I'm just going to let Phil Testa do his thing. And anybody who tries to tell me Nikki Scarfo didn't know Testa wasn't going to get killed is out of their fucking minds. I'm sure he knew about it. I'm, I'm not saying he had anything to do with it, but he turned a blind eye. Then he ends up becoming the boss. And the reason why Genovese backs him is because they all won Atlantic City. And when Nikki starts killing people, Chin says, fuck this shit. And then Gotti moves in because Gotti wants a piece of the action in Atlantic City. And they never got it. Now, what what Bruno did allow is he did not allow them to infiltrate the casinos, but he allowed them to set up shop and loan shark outside outside the casinos, bookmaking, all of that. Mm-hmm. Now, when you do that and you tell your own men they can't, you're going to get killed. Yeah, that was a dumb move. Uh, you know, when you tell your guys you can't sell meth, you can't sell drugs because they all wanted to do meth. And he says, none of my guys are allowed to do this. But then he allows the Gambinos in Cherry Hill, which is Philly territory, mm-hmm. to, to sell drugs and make millions of dollars. It's kind of like, okay, you're telling me I can't earn, but you're getting rich off this shit. And you're giving kinda, territory that belongs to us in Atlantic City to these pricks. I kind of disagree with you and Chris on that, though. I think he made yeah. the right move on that, though. Because if you got a bunch of motherfuckers selling drugs, you know how hot shit will get all of a sudden. Oh, no, there? I agree with his decision not to do it. 100%. It would, yeah, that's why he didn't do it. But it's just a bad look to let people outside your family do it. It right creates. Next to you, but it not creates, let your own family do it. You know, it, it creates an echo chamber is what I like to call it. Uh, and this happens mm. in everyday life. If you've got one friend that's bickering with another friend, you're going to fall somewhere in the middle of that. But you got to be careful about the advice you give because if you give the appearance you're on their side, mm. the first person they're going to use in that argument is, well, he mm. believes me. So that's why you can't do that. And I think Angelo Bruno kind of fell asleep at the wheel a little bit. Mm. You know, I think times were changing. I think when Carlo dies, he loses a lot of the support that he did have. Uh, and I think he still made the right decision by saying, no, we're not allowing any of our guys to sell drugs. Fuck that. I get it. Mm-hmm. But it has a certain optic viewpoint from the street level when you tell a guy he can't do something and you're making millions off of it. And then you're allowing them to book make and loan shark in your territory for a cutback. And it's like Philadelphia is always so fucking big. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. We're talking, not we're talking place. what? Six, eight, 10, 12, 14 square blocks of South Philadelphia. Yeah. And you're something telling like that. Me, you got a hundred guys fighting over one rack. It yeah. just. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if, if you it. go in Center City, yeah, if you go from Center City, Broad Street cuts through a whole city. And if you go south on Broad Street from Center City, where South Philly picks up, it's only about what four miles long, something like that, till you get to the end of it or something. It's not, it's not mm. that big. A lot of people say Philly's more like a big town, South Philly, anyways. But uh, but you know, so here, here's another thing. That's do you think Funzy? maybe told them okay and originally wanted to go along with okaying it but felt out the commission and know they'd be against it and that's why he turned and said no i never agreed it because if he always wanted atlantic city funzy and the genovese and he had an agreement with capa negro to get atlantic city mm. kind of got what they wanted by taking bruno out so you think funzy maybe wanted to go along with him but knew he couldn't pull it off because the rest of the commission would be against it killing the boss Mm. That's a good spin, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> well, th- think about it this way, okay? As Jeff said, Funzi was really pissed at Bruno not giving him a cut Atlantic City. The main objective for New York guys, especially Genovese, was to get Atlantic City. So mm-hmm. if he goes and has OKs behind closed doors, OKs, Captain Negro killing Bruno, and then he could get a piece of Atlantic City, why then? Why then kill Captain Negro when you kind of got what you wanted? Mm, well, I get what you're saying. I get exactly point, what he's saying. They, they, because they got to make a point to everybody else. If you think about doing this, this is what happens. But it didn't work because it was like, what, uh, less than a year later, they they killed Phil Testa. And that's right. the thing is like the, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Mm-hmm. And then you got Frank Narducci. God rest his soul. I don't want to say anything negative about him. But he does the same shit, and I find it hard to believe uh, because I, I know his son very well, okay, uh, Phil. And I can tell you this much. His father was no dummy. His father was beloved in South Philadelphia, and I can't imagine that he – seeing what happened before him, I can't imagine he'd make the same mistake unless somebody poked him a little bit 
and said you're, he's mm, not backing. You're saying that. Why in God's and, name? And that's what I think. I think somebody, and I don't know who, but I think somebody says, go ahead, do it. We'll support it. We'll support it. Because kind of just like they did with Kaepernick. I mean, you can't you can't expect like Frank Narducci, who it's been alleged is responsible for the bombing, but think about it. Do you really think he's sitting there on his stoop in South Philly, his row house, going, you know what? I'm going to do what they did and I'll get away with it because I'm better. Nah, come on. Of course not. No, hmm. no way. And that's why I think there was a lot of stuff we're never going to find out. I think there's a lot of backdoor dealing. So hmm. let me ask you this as far as Atlantic City. When you talk, when we hear about Vegas, you keep hearing about the Chicago skim, the Chicago skim. So, in regards to Philly controlling Atlantic City back then, did they have their own skim going? Like you hear about Philly having a piece of Atlantic no. City, but was it a skim? No, no. More all, they had was, all, all they had was unions, right? Mm. You know, you don't need to skim when you. I mean, you do need to skim. Don't get me wrong, but right. when you have. You know, Philly, everything's union, bartenders union, dishwasher mm -hmm. union, right. everything's a fucking union. And when you have those unions and you're controlling the concrete and mm -hmm. on Atlantic City, you control everything. And they control the, you know, politicians. Donald Trump got mm -hmm. a lot of benefits from Nikki Scarfo. Sure, he did. Not just that, but he got a lot of benefits from uh, Tony Salerno's company, too, here in the city. Wow. Wow. You know, because he paid, he played, he paid for ready mix and he only, and Donald Trump only went with unions that were mob controlled. And he did that so that he wouldn't have to pay high union wages. Mm. And anytime that he had a problem with the union, what do you think he did? He contacted somebody, the Gambinos, and they came down and fired everybody or cracked their heads. Right. right. You know, that's, that's, that's one of the things that, it, that Trump did, you know, and, I and people it. say this all about, and I'm not, I want to get political, but. You can say whatever you want about Donald Trump, scumbag, jerk off, whatever. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you one thing about that guy. He's never told on anybody. Hmm. Oh, he's old school. He's not a rat, man. He's as old school as they come. He's as stand up as they come. He may yeah. be a degenerate in every other fucking fashion of life. But this is a guy who literally not five, six, seven years ago, got investigated for a bunch of stuff in Atlantic City and some stuff here in the city that he did that was highly illegal mob contracts and all. He actually had a meeting with Tony Salerno in Roy Cohn's office. What? Wow. Yeah. 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 It was, That's there's FBI awesome. reports on that. Yeah. And wow. it was about him bringing in unions to do all the construction work, but they all had to be mob controlled unions because wow. he knew it was cheaper. And at a time when the unions were all striking here in New York city, there was only one place that was able to get contra uh, concrete. And that was Trump tower. Wow. So that should tell you something. Wow. You know, yeah, but right. no matter what people want to say about the guy, I mean, he doesn't, he didn't rat on anybody. He, he, he's old school. Like you, 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 you'll never see Trump say, I'm sorry. You'll never hear him admit any wrong because old school ways saying you're sorry, admitting slightly being wrong is like a sign of weakness. And he won't do that. You think Giuliani going to hold up Jeff? And Chris, y'all, y'all. You know what's funny? I watched something last night on uh, the Discovery Plus app. They had the, like the downfall of Rudy Giuliani, and of course, I had <laughs> I had to fucking watch it because they're showing like the one where he's outside like the dildo shop and he's got the hair dye running down his face and he's screaming about this. Do I think he's gonna hold up? Yeah, I do, and and I think the reason why is because I think he's fucking insane. Mm. I think you'll get Giuliani post nine eleven. Mm -hmm. The greatest thing that Giuliani could have ever done is what he did on 9-11. Now, he invented stop and frisk, which is complete and utterly disgusting. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was Giuliani's moment. And Giuliani's star, once he tried to run for president and, and lost, he sort of was out of the limelight. And the best way for him to get back into the limelight is, mm -hmm. hey, there's Donald Trump. We've known each other for a long time. But that has been Donald Trump's one of his biggest downfalls. Because Giuliani says crazy shit, crazy shit on TV. Like, uh, you know, uh, we had meetings with Russians, but it wasn't what you think. Like, why are you even admitting to that? Mm. Like, that's a dumb fucking thing to admit to. And I think Giuliani um, cares about Giuliani, you know, and, and how on earth he got away with that Borat video. Did you guys ever see that? No, I saw it. So Borat sends in like a minor child, like a 14 year old girl. And she's like in a room with him 
and he's literally getting ready to pull his dick out of his pants. And Borat runs in and goes, what are you doing? She's too old for you. And she's 14. And he's just a oh, microphone that was falling into my pants. He was getting ready to pull his dick out. You for real? Are you fucking around? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So uh you could probably find that on YouTube. But I think that Giuliani just wants to be in the limelight so bad and wants to be recognized. They, listen, they would have named fucking schools after that guy if mm-hmm. he had just gone away after 9-11 and just been like a public speaker or whatever. But uh, he has started to believe some of the most insane shit. And do I believe that he thinks for one <laughs> second that that election was stolen? No, I think he knows damn well Trump's nuts, but yeah. he wants to be seen. You know, like I mean, come on, you're gonna he have wants to, to stay rel- is relevant. There was a, um, it was funny because in this show they showed him saying, Donald Trump tweets, "Hey, there is going to be a press conference out to, outside the Four Seasons," because that's what Giuliani told him. So. Two seconds later, he goes, wait, Four Seasons Landscaping Company. Giuliani's that stupid that he would do a press conference at a landscaping company on the right. On the left, there's a dildo shop. <laughs> <laughs> and how did he not even recognize that prior to doing the interview and saying, hey, let's move down a few storefronts? You know, Because I think, it, I think at the end of the day, it comes down to he just wants to be seen. Oh, he, well, he was definitely seen, seen that day. <laughs> <laughs> do I do I think he'll hold up? Yeah, he's he's not going to rat mm. because you know why he's not going to rat because he, he's really the he's going to be the fall guy in all of that because he's mm. the asshole who went to Russia. He's the asshole that dealt with these people, and Trump's mm. going to be the fall guy because he put a, an imbecile to handle everything. And, and the reason why Trump did this was because Rudy may be crazy, he may say all the wrong kind of things, but he's the only person defending me. Mm, I, I okay. get it. That's that's the egomaniac in both of them. Uh, but I think it's only fitting. I think it's fitting. I would love to see Rudy go to prison. That would be fantastic. You, you know, I, I, I think the Rico charge is a reach, but I wonder if they went with the Rico charge in order because it carries a long sentence, thinking maybe that will prompt some guys like Giuliani to come forward and maybe rat on Trump. I know you just said he wouldn't, but like I wonder hmm. if that's why they try well, to Well, they're using they're using a very odd not it's not even a loophole, it's it's a forgery conspiracy. And like in order to even use Rico, you have to have a conspiracy and how the conspiracy easily works. I think it's a stretch, but I can see where the feds are going with this. Mm-hmm. Because who does Rudy work for? Work for Trump. Right. Who does everybody right. else work for? under him right Trump. so so unless unless they're all acting on their own behalf then you follow up the ladder just like in an organized crime case yeah it's, it's the same thing I and just that's that's yeah. that's where you're at now do i think it's a federal crime to to go on national television and say i won the election you you didn't no but right. when you start making accusations about rigging and, and stuff like that. There's a lot of laws that are really fucking strange. But the thing that the thing that hurt him was when he called Georgia and spoke to the governor or whoever it was, they recorded the conversation. Yeah, find me votes, do whatever you yeah, gotta so do. That, yeah, that, that's that's gonna hurt him, man. You know, like, hey hey Jeff, I thought it's illegal to record a conversation without me knowing though. It depends. If I'm here in New York and I want to call you on the phone, I don't have to tell you. Wow, I didn't know that. It's a York, state to state. Yeah, because New York, like okay. in Texas, in Texas, it, I think it's two to two, which means I have to tell you, but New York is one to one, meaning as long as one person knows, that's all that matters. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's you a know? state to state law type of thing. But uh, hey, you said he's all right. Well, how about agnostic? Any chance he comes on? If he wants to. The link's in the. Drop the, the link. link. Agnostic. Get on here, man. You're the funniest dude on all of fucking mob <laughs> is, This guy's a fucking trip. You read his comments. Every other comment he cra- he has cracks a joke, man. He's just no drama. No, no drama. Oh, now here you go. Here's here's here's, here's a really good question. How many days does he live before he gets whacked? Think they're gonna hit wow. Giuliani? I don't. Nah, Can't. Wow. He's too public. Come on. Hey, you know, I saw a don't? real interesting uh, a, a trailer to a documentary about the owner, uh, the founders and the people that owned Liberty College or university, the all Christian school. 
So they they had this is like an all Christian. You're talking about ball Jerry ball. Falwell. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but did you see in, in that uh document? I don't know what's true, but he he backed Trump and it says that Trump kind of uh blackmailed them or something because he knew of their uh shady dealings like Jerry Falwell wanted to put on. Larry Flint into prison the rest of his life because he had a skin magazine. Yeah, now he's doing And when he said does. when Larry Flint got shot, he said he deserved it. Like that's wow. listen, anybody that stands and uses a book as a weapon, you know, uh oh, who's that? Uh oh. Who is P? You know it's the one and only. Yeah, I do. Agnostic. There he is. <laughs> How are there you? He is. <laughs> oh, I, I think you're great. I, I think oh. I'm all right. I need to stop smoking this fucking elf bar. It makes me cough like I'm smoking weed. Just, no, no, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you can that, gentlemen. That thing is harsh, man. What's up, what? I said, Jeff, I don't know how you smoke that thing, man. Them things is harsh on the lungs, man. Yeah, I, I don't like it, but I don't want to smoke in my house, though. That's the thing. <laughs> Agnostic, what are Jeff, you doing? Is this monetized? No, is because I played music. There. No, not when I play music. I played. Uh, uh, did I play anything that was? Yeah, I played Philadelphia Freedom. Yeah, they won't. Yeah, that's uh, why I don't monetize because they'll they'll kick me uh, in the balls if I do it. But uh, I got I got so donations I tonight, which is nice. So I won't feel bad fucking it up. No. What's going on, Agnostics, man? Pleasure to meet you. Uh, yeah. You're bouncing in and out. I can't really Audio's hear me. Not, not working well. Am I? Plastic. How about now? A little bit. Could hear you yeah. now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, okay. You sound okay yeah, now. Yeah, Giuliani. Giuliani, uh, you know, I'm from New York, so to me, Giuliani was a scumbag. I mean, he, uh, <laughs> the, the damage he did and a lot of people around the country, they get me sick when they go, well, he was a great mayor. You know, he, he, he was a great prosecutor. He crushed the private sanitation. He turned that into a minimum wage job. He crushed <clears throat> the fish market, turned that into a minimum wage job. Uh, he, he screwed Carrick. I mean, insanely. Uh, the De Tomaso brothers, that's never spoken about. They're the ones that built uh, Yankee Stadium. Yep. He screwed them over. I mm. mean, the guy, the guy was, you know, the guy's a low-life politician. That's all he is. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I bet a so, lot of people that say he was a great mayor don't even live in New York, so they weren't affected by his bullshit. You know? mm -hmm. Right, right. So people clap and they say, well, he cleaned up the fish market. You know, he cleaned up all the corruption. Well, when I was a kid, my friend's fathers worked there, and they were our neighbors. You know, they were middle-class people. The guy swinging off the back of the garbage truck was, you know, my friend's uncle. So, so these were good jobs, and he crushed them. So, And he brought in, and, and he conspired with waste management. That's why Jeff can tell you right now, if you look in New York City, 90% of the garbage is waste management. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. So, Agnostic, oh, I heard you. I heard you were causing you some know, trouble that was on a, YouTube. That was a good job. Oh, yeah. every chance I get. I, I just got done telling the guy no drama about talking about other channels. Which, I know. Which, you know you just, I just wanted to bust his balls. No, hey man, you're good. I hear. I hear I things. <laughs> I don't. I don't watch. I don't watch any of the bullshit, but I hear things. <clears throat> I don't, yeah. I, I don't, you know what? I don't need to watch it because uh, inadvertently, like on a Monday or Tuesday, I'll get like an email and somebody like from A to Z tells me everything that was said. And as long as I'm not mentioned, I leave it alone. You know, if they bring me into it, then that's, that's going to be another fucking story. <laughs> Trust me. Hey, I appreciate all the people in the chat that are interested in the meet and greet because we did need small handful of more people to get it going so it looks like we might agnostic are you trying to come in on another channel agnostic <laughs> wow that was rude jeff 
What was? Well, I answer one question and you throw me off. No, I had <laughs> I had two channels pull up with the same name. So yeah, I uh, yeah I had a few problems. <laughs> oh, did you? What? I'm confused. I hope it was <laughs> only one of me. No, there yeah. was. I had. No, it was I, two. I had two other agnostics pull up on the screen. Oh boy. But I think it was you, but I didn't boot you. Oh, no. No, I'm the real one. Huh. Yeah, no, I went. I think it was my end. It just went dead yeah, I was on say, I wouldn't. What the fuck? I wouldn't throw you off of here. I'm not like all those other people. <laughs> You're good. I'm going to throw you oh. off. It'll be for a good reason, but I'll at least so, curse about 100 times beforehand. I hear you. At least you're straight up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't... You know, I, I always give you suggestions, and you never followed them. But uh, one guy you would, you would, I think you would enjoy researching. Can you hear me? Or, or, no, yeah, or am I breaking up? No, no. I hear you. All right. I hope you appreciate it. I climbed up a fucking tree to get a signal. <laughs> <laughs> So and I gotta, I gotta guy, swing my what arm. Guy you want to look up, agnostic? All right, look up Fat Nikki Edkins from Staten Island. Never heard um, of him. And Fat yeah, he he. I could talk about it. He passed away, but he was a captain. <clears throat> and the reason that we call him uh, Nikki Edkins was he took over Edkins Junkyard. And if you saw the movie, analyze this. Mm -hmm. That was the junkyard they tried killing uh, De Niro and Crystal in. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, true story. But, wow. it, I mean, the funniest thing was, I, I mean, I could tell the story. He passed away. If you don't mind, I'll tell it. If you want to tell it, go ahead and tell it. All right. The... There was a uh, somebody that flipped. He was he was Nikki's like right hand man for the junkyard and dealing mm -hmm. with all the cars. <laughs> so one day, when you walked into, if you ever see the movie, you'll see when they're walking down the, the driveway, you'll see an office trailer on the right. Well, that was the actual office. So when you walk in, you look to the left, and it's just one long counter, and then the guys would be behind the counter, and you go up and order your pots. Well, Nikki would sit on a folded chair at the end of the run, you know, the end of the trailer, and he would act like he had a stroke. And, and, I, and out of respect, you know, I would have to go up and, how, how you doing, Nick? And he would reach up his little feeble hand and shake his hand and he would mumble. <laughs> so, so I, I, I felt horrible, right? I'm like, this guy was a legend, and now he had a stroke. He's fucking retarded, you know? So they put him... There goes my monetization <laughs> right there. So, so they put him in... I can't. They put him in the corner like a fucking plant, right? So... I, I go through this routine for a couple of months, and his son was real cool. So, you know, I see Nikki, I go pay my respects, you know, almost every day at one point. So the informant, I don't know that he's wearing a wire. I, I honestly did not notice. So what happens hmm. is I stop in, I do what I have to do, I talk to the informant, and he says, look, what are you doing? I says, I'm going, if you... Look at a map. My neighborhood is my my building where I lived in, in Port Richmond at the time is three minutes. When you get in the car, three minutes, you're at my door. So I said, I gotta meet somebody. He goes, Come back here. I need you here in an hour. So he says, All right, for what? What's going on? So he goes, Nikki wants you to come with me when I drive him home. So I says, Okay. So he he gives me the eyes, like he's gotta talk to me. We go outside, he goes. Look, when we get in the fucking car, do not laugh. So I said, no, I'm not going to laugh. Like, what, what, what's going to, you know, what's the guy going to start drooling on himself? <laughs> so, I, I, promise, I said, I won't laugh. True story. He lived in Toad Hill. So 
We escort him out. You know, you got to walk him. The poor guy, he's got a stroke. He's mentally retarded. He's all crippled. So we bring him outside and we load him into a Jeep. He's in the front seat. The informant is in the driver's seat. And I'm in the back seat behind Nikki. We take off. We get halfway through the neighborhood. We're about, I don't know, 25 minutes from his house. And all of a sudden, I see his little pudgy arm come up. And he grabs the rear view mirror, which I didn't think he could possibly reach. And he <laughs> points it at me. And he, he looks in the mirror so we can see each other. And he goes, hey, I just wanted to say thanks for the other day. <laughs> and I, I was stunned. I went, yeah, yeah, don't mention it. And I had my face stuck to the window. I'm trying to get out of the view with a mirror. Then we get to his house, and as you go around, he had a, a pool in the backyard, so when you come out of the living room, you could, like, fall right in it. And I'm telling Charlie, the informant, I says, so I guess we don't have to watch him fucking bob and weave in this pool. <laughs> and the informant starts laughing. <clears throat> so, yeah, that was my Nicky Edkin story. I'll never forget it. That's oh. awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I, I, the informant never told me. So I had no <laughs> clue. Hmm. Oh, uh, I well, you think it. that was uncomfortable? Think of how it felt the next time I seen him doing the retard play. <laughs> 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 I had to fucking go along with it now. I'm like, want to look at him going, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, there were some funny times. You're great, man. All right. You guys are the best, man. All right, here's here's an interesting question for everybody in the uh, on the panel. Who is more powerful, Frank Lucas or Nicky Barnes? I have no idea. I say Nicky well, Barnes. Probably Nicky Barnes. Frank Lucas was a bullshit artist. Yeah, I'm pretty much uh, right there with everybody else. Was Bumpy hey. Johnson the most powerful of all of them? Between between Nikki Barnes, Frank Lucas, Matthews, and Bumpy Johnson. Different who, kind of power. Hmm? Could you explain kind of that, Jeff? Uh, Could you explain that? What a different yeah. kind of power? Yeah, what do you mean by that? Well, Bumpy Johnson came up in a time where he had organized crime that was pretty much how to say this without insulting anybody it, it, organized crime is allowing him to do a lot of stuff. And he was partnered mm -hmm. with them. Whereas I think Nikki Barnes was it too. You know what it mm -hmm. is? I'm thinking of, you know who I, you know, who I'm thinking of is uh Frank Matthews. That's the guy. Mm -hmm. not yeah, that's why I said that. Okay. All right. My bad. Oh, that Matthews hey, Jeff, is Frank Matthews. Smart. Is he dead? I would hope so. No, no, he's, he, he's hiding out. He's up in the mountains with me. <laughs> for a long time, then. <laughs> God. Oh. So you think, yeah. Well, he disappeared, but he how can somebody I mean, just disappear like that, Jeff? Like, just, so here's the thing about that, knows, right? Nothing? So he he has all of this money. He gets arrested in Las Vegas. He's somehow allowed to like withdraw like two million dollars and just go. Wow. I've always said, and I've always thought I helped. I, I thought the government helped facilitate him leaving. Well, you know? so you, what year was it? Oh fuck, I don't know. <laughs> it had to have been like eighties. Well, me, I mean, me, I think about it all the time. I regret I didn't come up here earlier when I was making a ton of the money because, it, you know, I look at where I'm at, and if you if you came up here with two million in the suitcase. You could hang out mm. for the rest of your life and have a great life. You know? Mm. It says, I just looked it up, the, I, the year Frank Matthews 73. disappeared. Yeah. It says he was set to appear in court and Matthews vanished with his girlfriend with $20 million never to be seen again. $20 million? Well, with, that much money, with that much money, he couldn't get rid of her? <laughs> yeah, for that money, you could just have her chopped up and say, uh, "See ya." Here's a hundred right, grand. Go grab me coffee. <laughs> I'll, I'll, here, here's a hypothetical for you. So, knowing agnostic Jeff, if you want to participate, Dean, 
knowing what you do now, the history of how everything went down in the mob, hypothetically, if you're dropped in the middle of New York City in 1960 and you want to start making moves and getting in with people to make money, what do you do? Who do you approach? Oh, I know the answer oh. to that one. Let's hear it. All right. I go right to my Uncle Vito, and I tell my uncle, you know, I thought about this. I see what's going on with these fucking mongoloids. Can you get me that job as a deckhand <laughs> on the Staten Island Ferry? Hmm. That's what I would do. You would drive the ferry? Uh, I would have been a deckhand oh. and then worked my way up. Well, That's in me. New York City. I'm not getting more... Like I would get an operation and become a woman. <laughs> Sorry, well, I just that's, thought I would. That's, I mean, that's just a personal desire, but he's saying if you were back then. <laughs> I was talking like more mob related, like knowing how everything went down. And if you're a guy and obviously you're, you're an outsider, they're not going to listen to you. But just hypothetically, you could go to certain people, tip them off of this or that. Like, how long? Oh, shit. Oh, okay. okay. All right. I would I would tell them I would tell them all I would I would try to do whatever I could in a commission to get them to enforce deal and die. You deal, you die. That's it. That's the number one how contribution any of them could have made. How, I'm saying, how would you you get money? I'm saying if you want to get in and, 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 and use the mob and get in with guys to try to make money yourself through being connected with them. But I don't know. It may be a dumb question. I just figured it'd be fun. Now. We should no, uh, that's we should, actually a good question. We we should bring agnostic yeah. to the to the to the meet and greet. That's no, actually a good uh, question. I, 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 you would you wouldn't have to hire a comedian or anything, man. That's fucking no, this guy's great. I, I would bother everybody for a photo and an autograph. I don't give a fuck if it was the landscaper. Can I have your picture? <laughs> 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 Tommy said he, said he wasn't far from it, but if he's in North Jersey, sure, it's not that close. Whatever. Oh, All right, I have, a, I, have a, I have a I have a question for the group because I'm curious. What? Where will be the next? If they, if we if we follow log lines, the history always repeats itself, right? Where is the next mob shooting going to take place? Canada. Hmm. Huh. Canada, Staten Island. <laughs> I was going to say Canada too. It's unstable right oh, now. You well, all I right, didn't know you were talking it, about Let's Canada. just keep it to the United States. Oh, oh all right. So Staten now Staten just Island. curveball at us. <laughs> Staten Island comes right out of his mouth again. Staten Island. Yep, mm. and it's good reason. Oh. that that's where all the power is. But I'm a, do they they have a moratorium against murder though. Right, but he said if if there is another shooting, where would it take place? Correct. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Staten Staten Island. You let's you think about it. Like, go I'm ahead. gonna say New Jersey. Ooh. In Staten Island, Chris. In Staten Island, you couldn't throw a fucking dead cat without hitting a wise guy. <laughs> no, that's all. Mm. Stat that's why I hate going to Staten Island. Mm. Yeah. So. If you're gonna if you're gonna clip if you're gonna clip somebody with any power, where most likely they're only gonna be in one or two places, uh, hmm. Long Island or Staten Island, no Brooklyn, uh, not even Queens. Forget the Bronx. So it's gonna be Long Island or Staten Island. Hmm. Right. I feel, well, that's I'm, where like isn't that where the guy I, I forget the names Jeff, but where one guy mob guy gave like hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to some other mob guy to hold on for him, and then the mob guy didn't want to give the money back and went and killed Brooklyn. the guy. Like that. Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Brooklyn, yeah. I think it's friends, right? I think it's going to be south. I don't think it's going to be here in New York. South Philly. Really? And what do you what do you mean by south? Yeah. Mm. Philadelphia. South Philly. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm not going to expound like on... That. Huh? I didn't know it was hot like that. Oh boy! Well, you opened yourself up, man. Uh, I I don't know if it particularly is, but I think if you play out certain factors, one or two things goes one or two ways. Yeah. Hmm. I, I I and and I'll tell you too. I I think that 
Uh, and I say this all the time, like going to South Philadelphia is like going to a time warp. It's like 1960, the old Italian lady looking out the window. Everybody knows everybody. It, it's especially when you're in a small area and everybody's fighting for the piece of the pie. I don't think it'll take much for somebody to lose their shit. Hmm. You know, whereas in New York, they can outstretch their arms a little bit and, and do other things. But when you have a lot of guys in, in one central area, it, it could take somebody as simple as refusing to kick up, you know. Uh, that that could create an create an issue, but I, I definitely think um, that's going to be on the cards. Well, <laughs> that's why I kind of said New Jersey, Jeff, because I think it's just Tom. Tom start getting the New York guys out. Of, I'm from New Jersey, you know. And I, and I, I always figured you heard were you say that. Yeah, and I always heard you say that like many times over. Like if if Sam the Plumber would have started clipping New York guys the moment they came here, yep, we would would have never had no New York guys here. Ah. Uh. Too, too big and too strong. I would agree with that in principle, but I think he sort of set a precedent by not fighting mm -hmm. back at all. Mm -hmm. I think once you do that, then, I mean, like I've always said, can you imagine it if, if the Jersey guys owned Jersey all on their own without mm -hmm. anybody, you know, but then again, the argument to make against that is, but they also needed very powerful guys in the ports. Because the Port of Newark is not owned by the, the Cavalcantes. It's a Genovese turf. Uh, and I think the fact that you have representatives allegedly from all five there, like how much turf and territory can there really still be now? You know, so everybody else that's that's a little smaller is going to be fighting for breadcrumbs. Well, Elizabeth is not the same no more. I can tell you that right now, Jeff. There's yeah. no disrespect to anybody that's Portuguese. There's nothing but Portuguese people out there now. Yeah. I'm being serious. It's not the same in Elizabeth no more. But you got to remember, yeah. too, Staten Island got, got Howlin' Hook Jersey back. City. Who did Staten yeah. Island have? Howlin' Hook. We had our own port. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, it, I, when I, I was a kid, it was gone. And then it came back. Hmm. I wish that the old school neighborhoods and from like the 80s and stuff, Brooklyn, Bronx were the same. I, I've only been, as far as the boroughs, I've been to Manhattan and I've only been to the Bronx once at nighttime to eat at the on Arthur Ave. But, you mm -hmm. know, it's all different now. I, I just wish I could have had a chance to see what the old school neighborhoods look like. The mm -hmm. other boroughs. Yeah, was, yeah, that's why I told you you need to come up for the feast. Oh, I'll come up for yeah. this. Absolutely. You'll enjoy Dude, it. She's Joey Gallo's sister. She'll be screaming out the window. Oh, she's <laughs> last. I wish you could have got her <laughs> on, man. Nah. Wait, you, you for real, Jeff? You, that's really yeah. his sister? Yeah, his sister still lives uh, Mulberry. Yeah. Wow. Turns out that uh, Albert Gallo was a rat. Nah. Yeah, I got his paperwork. You wow. did say you had some shit no, to let us me, know. Did Jeff? I say Albert? I think I meant Larry. What? Yeah. Yeah, I got Larry's the one that's been strangled? Yeah. You yeah. sure, Jeff? Maybe that's what did him in. Yeah, I got the paperwork. Yeah. I heard there's him. I heard there. him. There's, uh, I've got a stack of stuff that of guys who talk that people aren't going to believe. But, you know, there was a time period where I think everybody at some point was giving up something. You know, wow, Chris. Damn, you remember Jeff, when crazy. we were kids? They used to say, "Ring around the collar." That dude had ring around the neck. Yeah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> dude. yeah. He certainly did. Maybe that's what did him in. Almost getting killed. He's like, "Fuck this shit. I'm, I'm out. Yeah, I'm gonna rot. Who knows?" But the mm. biggest rot of all, I guess, that the, the most damage you still think was uh, Greg Scarpa. Oh yeah, I think so by far. Oh, hmm. uh, Scarpa damaged his own fucking family, disgraced his son. His son was a good dude. He's older than me. He was he was not a lot, but he was older than us. Yeah, it was and, amazing. Uh, he got out of prison because they said he had terminal cancer. He's still alive. Wow. <laughs> and, Imagine that. And is he is he doing shows with Larry Mazza? I oh, I don't think so. I didn't. I I knew that was bullshit. No, that was bullshit. Yeah. No, he's uh, from what I understand, he lives down in Florida. Hey, Jeff, how Good much information him. could he have really had given them though in the beginning stages? Do Remember what you were talking about that. Remember, as you, you were going through the Greg Scarpa files and you were talking yeah. about this, I, I'm not sure when it was, but 
how much really info could he have really given him that was useful though? Oh, not the uh, captain, not the not the captain years, the beginning years. Oh no, prior. Oh. I think a lot of it was a uh, prior. I think it was a lot of bullshit. Okay, you know because I I, I think that you know so a lot of the stuff, the lot Bless of the stuff, a lot of the stuff Thank he you. was telling them wasn't wasn't accurate. Mm. Uh, and a lot of the information he had would have been, I mean, listen, let, let's not get it twisted. And I think agnostic will tell you there are no mm -hmm. secrets on the streets. Okay. The organized yeah. crime is one of the biggest gossiping groups you're ever going to make, ever going to meet. If somebody does something, yes. somebody shoots somebody on a corner. Everybody knows about it an hour later. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think a lot of the information that Scarpa provided initially was all bullshit. But as he began to rise in rank, he had to, to be able to rise in rank by kicking up. And that's what the FBI facilitated. They gave him money so he could kick up. And then as he gets higher up, that's when he really starts to give them stuff. But uh, and looking at like probably 20,000 pages of rat files that I've gone through in the last couple of years, I think he's the worst. The absolute wow. worst. Yeah. Wow. Well, people well, always was say he worse than Mikey Stars? Said, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, God. oh yeah, yeah. Because he, he, uh, he, he, go ahead, act. He knew about it. That's something that always fascinates me. Because people say, "Well, how much could he know? How close was he to this one?" You got to remember something. When those guys got straightened out, you don't. Mm -hmm. It's not like the movies. You stay with your family, with your crew, and that. That's all bullshit. Yep. If a guy gets straightened out. He winds up in the first two years, he'll meet every made guy in New York. Wow. He'll know yep. every fucking body. And Jeff was right. And I don't care what people say and people could bash me. I was there. I seen it. I heard it. When these guys start drinking the, in the after hours, mm -hmm. the craziest shit comes out. So, mm. you know, you're in, the, you're in one family. But believe me, you got the dirt on everybody in every family. So hmm. as an informant, he doesn't have a one-shot deal like a cooperator. Somebody that right. goes to jail and flips can only tell you what, what he experienced, right, or what he witnessed. An informant like Rat Scarpa was, he went on for <laughs> years. Hey, you, you need to know where that body is? It's over there. You need to know who really did the shooting? It was him, not him. So hmm. he, he did a lot of damage. The same as uh, I hear this bullshit. If if you don't make it to court, you're not a rat. What? What? No. no. Now oh, the guy no. in my case, or or the case I was spared from, he was both. He was an informant. He wore a wire, and he cooperated. Oh, the trifecta. <laughs> yes. So he he did both. But like I said, I always I talked to Jeff about this. I always had a, a weird thing about this because I trust me, if he would have screwed me, I would have done about five years. You mm -hmm. know, he had nothing on me as far as doing life. But I was I was kind of shielded from all of it. So he had to do that by design because he knew me. Fuck, he knew me since I was six years old. So. Right. I've always like wondered, like, and I'm sorry to say it, but I would like to just run into him and have one conversation and just ask him, like, what was up with that? Yep. You know? And I know people on YouTube, oh, you can't do that. You know, he flipped. Sure you can. Oh, go fuck your sister. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I did it when the, when the, when I, when my co-defendants rolled on me, I ran into the main co-defendant that, that ratted me out at a gas station, like right after my father died. And I always wow. say to myself, thank, unfortunately, my father died, but that saved that kid's life. Wow. Because, you know, he walks up to me, hey, can I get a cigarette? And I'm like thinking, motherfucker, are you out <laughs> of your fucking mind? But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, somebody in the chat asked, did Scarpa solve those Mississippi civil rights murders? No. He was never no. in there. <laughs> no. <laughs> Two cops solved that. Yeah, that's Hollywood. Now, and, and so let, let me explain to people why, because see what a lot of people don't understand is Greg Scarpa's, uh, I guess it was his wife or whatever. She got charged with perjury, like five different counts of perjury. She lied on the stand about everything. She made it up or he made it up, but he was never in Mississippi, never involved <laughs> in any of that kind of crazy shit. I mean, if the CIA can kill Kennedy, what the fuck they need fucking 
uh, right. rat scarpa to go down there for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You come you on, you got I mean? feds. You got Common feds that could have played that role. Common sense. Yeah, yeah, I know you were being facetious. I just wanted to play into it. <laughs> oh. Hey, so, Jeff, yeah, I'm going to ask you another scum. question. How could Scarpa have all that shit going on and nobody in his family know nothing? Like, they don't even get no types of, like, vibes? Like, yo, this guy's got to be telling something. Uh, um, if Jeff, if all, four of us are sitting on, if, if all four of us are sitting here doing shit together and all three of us keep getting locked up, and Chris is not getting locked up. Eventually, I'm going to have to start asking Chris, what the fuck is he doing? Why he never get well, locked yeah, up? Well, yeah, that's a dead giveaway, something like that. Like, what the fuck's up with that? Well, but they were arresting him just enough yes. to sort of placate yes. everybody. And yes. when they arrested him, it would be for, like, simple, stupid shit. Driving without a license. Driving with, a, a, a you know, a firearm. Something stupid that wouldn't get him any time. And if you look at a lot of his cases when he was arrested, it was kind of like fines, fines, fines. That yep. should have been kind of a giveaway to them more than anything. Is that, well, how is it, you know, but here's the thing. Money blinds everybody. Hmm. And and right. and that's the God's honest truth. I mean, think about it for a second. Look at it in terms of John Gotti, okay? Sammy Gravano has basically he's he's whacking everybody in existence to take over their companies. And John Gotti realizes it, but he realizes it way too fucking late in the game. Hmm. You know, you always have to put yourself and isolate yourself to a certain situation where you say, okay, who has the most to gain by me not being here? And, that, wow. it, it, and if he'd have thought like that, it would have been Gravano because Gravano's coming to him saying, oh, Louis de Bono says this or Louis, Louis Melito says whoever says this about yeah. you, says that about you. And on a wiretap, it's very interesting because Gotti is talking to Frankie Lacasio and he says, did did DB ever steal from us? He's like, no, I checked everybody. He never stole a dime from us. Did he ever in your life say a negative thing about me? No. And that's that's Gotti realizing Gravano has yeah. lied to him for like a decade. Wow, it's too late. It's too, too late, late by that time. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think and wow. I honestly think Gravano was an informant before the FBI ever said he was. Hmm. I, I always, absolutely. I, 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 absolutely. I asked you something like that not too long ago, Jeff. You kind of put a spin on it like in the sense like maybe he was. Maybe he well, was. There's two things I would like to add to this, something that a lot of people don't know what they were doing with Scarpa. And hmm. I, I'm too young. I'm only 54. So I was a kid, and I heard from all, you know, my dad and all the, all the guys, you know, that he hung around. What they used to do was they would go to Scarpa. They figured it out after. They figured out the second half after, he, he, you know, everybody knew he was a rat. And what they used to do was they would go by his club and they would talk to him earlier and he would say, yeah, mm -hmm. all right, there's this guy, Chris Gorky. He wears a baseball cap and glasses. He's a big guy, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's hanging out with the guy, Jeff. They'll be there this afternoon. They don't have any weapons on him, right? The mm -hmm. feds would pull up, jump out. You two, come here. Put your hands against the wall. They would shake him down. They would find him with no weapons. Then they would show him phony pictures. Do you know this guy? No, we don't know him. You don't know this guy either, huh? All right, we'll be back. And they used to do it all the time. And what that caused in the neighborhood was people would say, oh, man, the fucking feds won't leave Greg alone. So oh, it was well orchestrated. That's a smart yeah, move. <laughs> they used to pull, and I'm telling you the truth. And this is before, and I was saying this before Gabriel came out with it. <laughs> George Gabriel came out and finally admitted they were doing it. They used to come up and try to get us to get in cars with them all the fucking time. And when I say us, I'm talking about me. We were kids. We were 19, what? 20 years old. And they used to try to get us to get in cars with them. Because you know what happens then. They pull off and then they tell you, listen, you know, when we bring you back, everybody's going to think you're a rat. So mm. you got, got anything for us? Yeah, they, they pulled a lot of slimy shit. I, I'll never forget. Wow. My uncle told me. He said, wow. what? I said there's no oversight for him. No, not at all. Look at look at the Vecchio, what he did to Joe Simone. When I talked to Joe Simone about what, what the Vecchio did to him, you could see the fucking heartbreak in this guy's eyes. I mean, the guy was a legitimate cop his whole fucking life. And he gets fucked out of his pension. 
he gets accused on a on a I Jeff could look it up on a what was it a twenty three count of Rico indictment? Yep. Wow. And he beats every charge. He's acquitted of every single charge, and for the next twenty years he's fighting for his NYPD fucking pension because when they started all of this he had two weeks to go before he was retired. I mean, come yep. on. That guy did a well, lot of bullshit. DeVecchio De was also the case agent overseeing, uh, overseeing Tony Salerno. Really? Yeah, and uh, Cyrano Salerno. And there was so, a lot of bullshit in that case, too. Oh, yeah. Joe Simone always swore to it, and now we're finding out it's true. Joe Simone has always sworn. I remember when he told me this, that they got pulled off that stakeout. And back then, used to go, they had a, uh, an office because they didn't want to be in the precinct. So they, they actually went and rented an office, organized crime, for the NYP. They had their own office. And you would go there and do your roll call and all your intelligence work. And Joe told me that he was on the stakeout, him and his partner. So they went, they checked, you know, whatever they call it, rolling out. Um, they go home. Next day, they come in. Hey, were you guys sitting on that guy last night? Yeah, yeah, but we got pulled off. Really? Do you have everything documented? Why? What's going on? That fucking guy got clipped last night. When they went over the timelines, he got clipped like an hour after they got pulled off. Hmm. So the feds chased them and said, listen, guys, we're, we're pulling rank here. You got to go. Pulled Joe Simone out with his partner and wind up telling Greg where the guy was. And Greg came and killed him. Yep. No justice, hey, no. Could you do me a favor and drop the link one more time? One of your subscribers, I know, I tell you my buddy from Denver, Jason Miller, he yeah. said he'd come on. All right, just give me one second here. God, that last inhale of that elf bar about killed me. I'm, I'm done with that fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me when I came back, I was sweating profusely like, like I was going to fucking die. Go on a health kick. Start smoking again. Yeah, health kick. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to die doing one of these shows. You watch. Oh. And every, everyone will rejoice, and then they'll all start taking bids on who gets to skull fuck me. <laughs> I, I bet you get, hey, if you do that, I would consider you a champ, and you would get astronomical views. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jason, you dropped the link in the chat. If, if you're on YouTube, the link's up there right now. Just click the link, and on the main screen you're listening to now, you got to mute it, and then you go backstage. But, so I don't know, it really came on, but it's just a buddy of mine from Denver. He's a good dude. Yeah, Jeff. There were a lot of stories that that uh, you know, that I, I experienced <laughs> when I was a kid. That I just uh, Gus Farachi. Well, we used to call oh, yeah. Gus for race. Uh, I never fucking, I never believed that one. Never. That whole case just, just, I mean, it's worse than the Kennedy case as far as bullshit. You know? Crypto Crotch wants to know if you did a lot of time agnostic. Believe it or not, no. I did, I did all together, I did a couple of years, but it was on Rikers Island and I went up north once. Hmm. Yeah. I see Jason in the background. I'm going to bring him on in just a second. All right. I made almost a hundred bucks tonight. That's good, man. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We're on our way. Yeah. Don't, don't be afraid to, to donate, please. <laughs> hey, Jason. You're gonna how are make you? Me, good, sir. How are you? Make me go rob one right? of my neighbors now. Hey, Jason. What's up, bud? Thanks for coming on. Don't do that, Agnostic. No problem, but I figure I owed it to you by now. You've been asking me to come on for with you for so long. so. Well, I know you're a good dude. I met Jason like a couple summers ago. I went out to Denver to beat him. I actually met him through your show. We had a good yep. time. Yep. It was great, man. Like He came out. We went to uh, Gaetano's out here. Um, just had a good time with Whitewater Athens. Like, you know, Chris has been probably one of my best friends probably for the last three to five years. Like for the longest time we would just chat about your show. Um, and then we finally just started talking just kind of like this. And then he came out, we went whitewater acting and stuff. So it was a good time. Oh, that's the picture you sent, sent it from Gorky. You, uh, whitewater rafting. Yeah. Oh, I can't. <laughs> 
So, so Jason, I, I showed Jeff that one picture of Joe Bonanno being with the Denver family on the chart, and he almost yeah. said, no fucking way. Yeah. Um, it's wild. I mean, he had a cheese company out here, and uh, actually the Carlino brothers, Pete and Sam Carlino, um, from Pueblo, they knew uh, Bonanno and Maranzano back in the day, so that's how he got connected out here. Was that Grande cheese? Uh, I believe so. Or I, I want, yeah, or, or I want to say it was like Rio something. It was out of uh, Arizona, actually. And then there was one cheese factory here as well. But yeah, it was wild. I went into the uh, Italian deli, we go in here to, you know, buy stuff, you know, meat and stuff. In, and I was looking at the chart and it said Southern Faction Joe Bonanno. I was like, how the hell is he not like, a boss or listed towards it to bet. Yeah, he was on there. Hmm. Unbelievable. Wow. Unbelievable. Well, it's probably hmm. just from like doing business with them, you know what I mean? Someone probably just put that chart together and listed them, but it just know. shows how wrong they are though. I mean, like I don't think Joe Bonanno was gonna be told by the that by that time, you know, he was old. I don't think he was gonna be told what to do by anybody anywhere. So Yeah. Well, I agree. Uh, do you think the reason Tony Accardo never went to prison was because of him or the CIA? Nah, he was just a smart guy. Just a smart guy. You know? But I think that they also really sort of honed in on who they wanted to go after, too. Because, listen, we we did the the, uh, the Appalachian files, and it just proves what I already speculated, that, that they had information on everybody for a very long time. That was nothing yes. new. It, Mm-hmm. Those Appalachian files were nuts, all that info they had. Like, even knowing the hotels they were staying at the night before they even drove up to Appalachian. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, how do they get all that info, man? Like, they, that's a, man. That's a lot hey, of information you get in a short period of time. Kudos to Jeff, man. That was a lot of goddamn work listening to that shit. So I know it was yeah, a lot I, of work doing it. That was incredible. The Appalachian files is definitely one of your, I mean, I've been listening for years. That's one of your most informative shows I've ever heard. I mean, overall, like, it was great. Yeah, my favorite was the pizza show. Oh, yeah. Man. yeah. God damn, that was cheese. a good one, too. Any pizza joint I go to, I ask them what their cheese company is, and most of them say Roma Grande. Well, I mean, if you open up your uh, your, your fucking cabinets and you have Cola Vida, <laughs> then you have Profaci olive oil. There you go, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. So what I'm going to do really quick is I'm just going to, I don't know, should I even fuck with the, the meet and greet video again or just say fuck it? Uh, I mean, you can show it one more time. Hey, you know what I want to ask? And I don't know if you want to get into it. Are you going to expand on what we talked about earlier with, with Vinny Bacciano and the other guy and the lies? Or... No, I'm not going to go there. All right. You, you know why I decided not to do that? Because... If people are too stupid to to not recognize bullshit when they're being told it, oh why do God. I why do I need why do I need to be the guy that tells everybody chick he's a fraud <laughs> and full of shit? <laughs> why do I need him? to tell why why do I need to tell anybody Jeff Nadu's a fucking fraud? Why do I need to tell anybody Lee Cole's a fucking jerk off? I thought you was talking about Dom Sakali. Who? Oh, exactly. another jerk off. <laughs> talking about Dom Sakali. No. We can talk about John Panisi and his delusions and how his grandparents. Oh man! You know, hey, Jeff, oh, please, my yo, Lord. please, hey. yo, please, yo, that's my favorite Jeff fucking Chris. one you ever used to do. Please, I am glad to say this. <laughs> I remember one of the first times you had me on was about Panisi bashing that family that I yeah. know. Yeah. Well, guess what? I'm back in touch with them, so something good came of it. Well, that's good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and the famous quote. One of the brothers, I was on the phone with him about, not the last time, but about three weeks ago. And he goes, yeah, all this bullshit, organized crime. He goes, how fucking organized could it be? They're all in jail. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I've just always been curious is that, you know, you live your life. You do what you got to do in the streets. You become whatever you become. But, like, your grandparents are going to decide to tell you to rat. They're, like, not going to visit you and say, by the way, turn the burner off. It's midnight and you're sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They go right to, you need to rat. And the thing is, he didn't need to rat. But they didn't even want to make him because he was schizophrenic as fuck to begin with. Oh, and yeah. Everything, everything he says is completely space cadet shit. 
When he and you told said that the story he tells story. about going to Philly and meeting guys isn't true either. No, because all of no. them said, I can tell you for, for certain, when I brought that name up, sitting around a bunch of guys, they looked at me and says, we didn't even, we've never heard his name until he came on YouTube. <laughs> they, they never met him. It. Never knew the Well, guy. Jeff, how's this for, for etiquette that uh, a lot of people that, that follow that asshole, they believe it. I'll give you a little something that I that I really didn't believe from the very beginning was Joey Molino came up to New York from Philly. They brought yeah. Joey Molino into uh, Peter Luger's, which was never one of my favorites anyway. But they bring him into Peter Luger's, and Joey Molino abuses the waiter in a place that a different crew brought him into. Right. You follow? Right. That's just something in etiquette. Etiquette? No, nobody would do that. No. You know? Well, I, I would have two. I would have one. Well, okay. This is going to get me in trouble, but fuck it. it I, my question would be is how much did he have to drink? That would right, be. Number, yeah. But, but number two, I, I can tell you, and, and Chris, Chris can back this up a hundred percent that even, even a very inebriated Joey Merlino has full control of his faculties. Yeah. And that's yeah, what yeah. he would do. He's still like no. very self-aware. I mean, for a little guy, he got a tolerance like a fucking elephant. But he, you know, he just has such a high tolerance that he just, you know. I mean, I, when I used to drink, you know, you get out of high school in your early 20s. And I'd get smashed but, and still have be self-aware. Well, no, I see what you're saying about the alcohol. But that would be like you guys are in Philly and you invite me down there. And you say, listen, we're going to bring you to our, at one of our favorite hometown joints. And I go in there and start abusing people. You see yeah, what right. I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's just, no, no, I didn't buy the whole story. I thought, I thought the whole thing was bullshit. No, I, I, don't, I don't think, I, I can tell you I've been in his presence a few times and uh, he's not that kind of guy. He's very quiet. Yeah, he really he's been is. able to be yeah. low key for so long that and, yeah. and stay under the radar and then just, you know, that like when, as soon as somebody said going into a restaurant and abusing a waiter and another, it's like, no way, not a chance. Nah, no. not even. And then the drunk. ghost story, no way. the ghost story, what he was telling that, that story, I'm, I'm all I could envision as he was telling the ghost story was, I just come picturing uh, Bill Murray and Ghostbusters. <laughs> Bro, my grandparents come back and tell me something, and it's not lottery numbers that make me a millionaire. We're fighting when I get to heaven. Because, yeah, I mean, yeah. if you get one shot to come back, I better be rich. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I, I agree. Please go Joey, to Joey, if you're watching, the uh, link is in the chat. You can come on if you want. Oh. Not that he will, but we'll drop the link for him anyway. Who's that? Joey. Oh. Imagine that. <laughs> Listen, there's a couple of things in this life I think that when 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 my final hours are coming to me, I'm gonna remember. Several of them, most of them have to do with Philly, but I will never forget ever in my life seeing somebody that weighs 110 pounds if he's lucky swinging his shirt over his head singing karaoke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the whole place is crowded. I look down the end of the bar. There he is, fucking cutting a rug, man. Now he's having a good time. <laughs> that guy could party. Uh. Listen, South Philly guys just like to party, man. I, I, I'm not from there, but I lived there on and off a good amount of time. And, and one of my closest friends lived in the Irish section, which was Grace Ferry. And they just, oh, they just fucking party. Like, we would be there at their little local corner bar. We'd close around two or so. But, yeah, they'd stay there drinking a three, four, because, they, you know, they're friends with the owner. They would, they would at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, be in, be on, in the front porch or in somebody's house still going, going to the fucking beer distributor that's open, like, 24-7, buying a case of beer at, like, fucking 8, 9 in the morning. Like, I don't know how these guys do it. I can't do that. Chris, do you remember, I, and I'm not going to get into like the details, but you remember how you and I went somewhere early because I had to talk to somebody about an issue, right? You remember right. that? Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you remember the guy leaving, going to talk to whatever, and then him coming back and explaining to me X, Y, Z, right? Yes. I knew like in the next 40 minutes when he went quiet, when he said to me, when my friend said to me, you know, ah, don't worry, we'll figure something out. We'll talk about it later. I knew then the motherfucker was coming there. Yeah. <laughs> 
mean, it, I knew right then. You called it the whole night. The the, the, the DJ slash bartender slash other guy, he couldn't go home because, you know, he's going to call it a night, but he had to go grab his DJ equipment. I knew right then, and I, yeah, I looked, he, he, and I asked that guy later on. I said, you knew he was coming. Why didn't you say nothing? He said, hey, he wants to talk to himself. I'm like, all right. Yeah, it was cool with you. All these people think you don't know him. I mean, he even, when you went to the bathroom, he looked at you and said, hey, is that you? And he came over and gave you a big sloppy kiss on the cheek. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I, I remember you came back and sat down, and you said, Joey just came over and slobbered all over my cheek. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then uh, what was it? Frank the serial killer. Oh yeah, Showed up yeah. Later on that night. Yeah, yeah. A guy comes through the door, sir. Yeah, hey, let, let's just keep a low profile, minor. You know, not say anything we shouldn't. Dude comes through the door. Jeff yells, "Oh, look! It's Frank the serial killer." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he looked like a serious dude, man. You could tell that dude was. Oh, Frank. Oh yeah. 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 And Listen, why don't you call him up and see if we'll take us out on a boat ride? <laughs> Frank. You know, at- Go ahead. You want to get on a boat with a I, guy named Frank the Serial Killer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've I've already talked to Jeff about it. I'll, I'll tell you two guys. It's an insight. One guy thing. that just looked, one guy that just looked like you just don't want to play with them was Charlie Coniglia. Mm. Now I, you know, Absolutely, I was yeah. a kid, but used to look at him and just say, "No, nah, no, nah, that guy's fucking dangerous." <laughs> and the other one that I had the privilege of fucking being around when I was a little kid was fucking Roy DeMeo, and I told you that story. Oh, God. Yeah. When you went near Roy, when you would walk near Roy, your stomach would flip, like full of adrenaline. You would get this fucking feeling like the hair on the back of your neck is standing up. No, I Roy know that feeling Roy was just fucking quite well. evil. Yeah. I, yeah, I had that experience myself. So did my lawyer friend. He, he really felt that experience. Oh, God. Yeah. That's why I say a lot of these guys, the stories you hear on this fucking YouTube, it, it, they make me laugh, you know? <laughs> Tommy Karate, you know? He was evil personified. You know what Tommy used to do when we were kids that used to fucking annoy the shit out of me? He used to make us what? count in Japanese. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, you laugh. He, the whole Staten Island thing with Tommy and my dad was... Through the karate school, which was Smitty. You can look it up. It's all, I mean, it's all in fucking, it's all over the fucking media. And Tommy had just, because you got to remember, I'm a kid. So Tommy was only back like a year or so. But he used to go through the drill like, you guys, uh, you're learning? And we, and you know, we were kids. And Tommy was a nice guy as far as I was concerned. But, you know, he used to get each knee, so and she, and we'd fucking stand there like, oh, my God. I don't even, I don't want to speak fucking Japanese. I don't feel like listening to the fucking, I don't like listening to the guineas in my house, you know? And now you want me to speak Japanese. But yeah, he was, he, he was, like I said, he was cool. And when his attorney did that story and said that I would let him babysit my grandkids, I could see that. I could definitely see that. <laughs> Tommy, he, he's another one that gets exploited on YouTube. Tommy he's got cried every single yeah, nah. he doesn't seem like the kind of guy that uh, he does seem like the kind of guy that you could trust. Like he's crazy, but you could trust him with your kids because yep. obviously, if he's watching your kids, he's on your good side. So I'd, of course, I'd trust him. Right? Yeah, right. You know, your kids are going to be safe. Right. Right. Coming in. <laughs> well, that that's the thing, and they never talk about that. You know, uh, everybody that considered Tommy a friend. I mean, they still talk about him to this day. Could you, you know, imagine parent-teacher conferences? <laughs> <laughs> like with, with like Tommy Karate or like when Roy DeMeo's kid at parent-teacher conferences and uh, like they had to go in and like, we need to talk to you, you know, about, oh my Lord, that'd be terrifying. My straight, if I was a teacher, they get automatic straight A's. <laughs> right? Like <laughs> <laughs> my, my brother, he was a little on the comical side and he used to fucking, I mean, crack us up. He'd say, yeah. Why don't we just bring Tommy and Roy to the fucking school so they can, you know, bring your dad to work th- uh, to school day? Let's oh, bring my God. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, we were teenagers, and we'd be fucking hysterical laughing, you know? That's hilarious. So, but, you know, naming yeah. some of these, like, very feared mob guys. Who, if, you had a, if you each had to pick one mob guy, any family anywhere that was in America, 
that was literally the most feared number one guy who would you say? Most, most feared. feared. Like one guy. Well, does era matter? Because, like, if, if era doesn't matter, like, you got to go to Murder Eek, Pittsburgh Phil, mm -hmm. um, you know, those type of guys. But, like, recently, Roy DeMeo scares the shit out of me. Like, he just. Well, the way they made people disappear. Roy. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. Roy, if you ask me, and, and you got to remember something, I was a little kid. Um, right. They put him. They put him right across the street from my grandmother's house in Sheepshead Bay. Um, that had nothing to do with my grandmother, unless maybe she clipped him. I don't know. But <laughs> Roy, Roy was known, and, and I heard this since I was a kid, just like hearing that Sammy was a fag, right? You hear all of this in the street, yeah. and it makes me laugh because people say, oh, no, nobody says anything. The fuck we don't. You know, the streets always talk. And Roy was known to be a punk. I mean, this whole this whole thing, like you watch on the bio channel, you know, yeah. Roy would walk down the street and fucking people would, guys would part. If you put him against Patera, he would have been fucking beat to death in two seconds. Hmm. Um, well, yeah, Roy was in a hand-to-hand uh, -hand fight. I, I'm just saying fear. Is, right. You know, not, I'm not talking no, but I mean, fight. Right, but I mean being ballsy, like, listen, those those three guys are coming to kill us and they got guns. Let's go, let's go and blaze it up. No, so maybe that's not let's, right. That's not let's right. get more specific and say you are a guy in the mob and you found out that a contract has been taken out on you. Who is the last guy that you would want fulfilling that contract? We've got uh, somebody in the background really quick. I don't know who this is. Well, so if it's not in America, I'd say Pino Greco. I wouldn't want after me. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a really good one. Tom, on. Tommy would uh, Tommy would be on the list because he was very determined. Tommy yeah. wouldn't quit. Um, yeah. Psychotic, as far as being a psychotic douchebag, I would have to give that award to. Uh, I would have to give that to Gas. Gas was a bully. Oh, yeah. Gas was a scumbag. Well, I'm Damien? gonna go with a. I'm gonna go Roy DeMeo because he got a fleet of motherfuckers hey, that's coming. Damien? What's up, Damien? We talked with you. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Damien. What's, guys? what's up? How what's going on, man? Uh, we emailed, emailed back and forth a few times. Not is your last name? I just wanted to jump on real quick. Go ahead. D are you Damien Knox? Yes, sir. I thought so. How you doing? Thanks for buddy? throwing it out there like that. <laughs> Kristen, you could have. You could have said no. <laughs> What, <laughs> Jeff? Do you um? Hey, Jeff, do you have this Damien Social Security? I might need it. Four four three two seven five four. all starts with the letters. Go ahead. Uh oh, that hold on, we got another one. Uh oh, Ricky Hampton. Hi, Ricky. Can you? You there, Ricky? Yeah, I'm here. What's, What's up, up buddy? Hey, Ricky. What's going on, guys? What's hey, up, how man? are you? Well, Jeff, yeah. I said we should try to get some more guys on. Now it looks like fucking Hollywood Squares. Yeah, I know. Jason's the center square. Right? Like <laughs> Brady Bunch, though. Finally the most popular guy in the room for once. <laughs> Jason, hey, Jeff, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Sure. And this is yes, to sir. go back to what we were talking about earlier with Chris, and this is about Luciano. Hey, Jeff, do you think it would have – and I'm, it sounds stupid, but just follow me. Do you think it would have been better for Luciano to stay in prison and at least he would have maintained his power or it wouldn't have mattered? I don't think it would have mattered. Mm. I don't know. I, 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 What's the point of having the power if you're locked up and you can't in, like enjoy it a little, you know? I think yeah. prison back then was different uh, than like, you know, because I have friends and family in prison and stuff like you know, I'm sure they still got messages and out everything, but I would imagine that keeping communication in prison when there's, you know, very limited ways to talk to people would probably be pretty tough back then. Absolutely. Damien, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to rat you out. <laughs> no, nah, you're good. No, nah, I just, uh, first time I have listened to you for many years and I just wanted to jump on and just say hi and see how everybody's doing and, Dave, been who are some of your favorite mob guys or mobsters? And what's your like topic? Do you like? 
or mob guys you like here in the mountain the most? Favorite city or something? Uh, uh. I'm a little old school. I like the old Neil, Neil De La Coach. Um, just some okay. older guys. Uh, <clears throat> just the more silent but deadly motherfuckers that are just – <laughs> they don't care about the lime life. They just want to do their business and get on with their life. And that's their business. So let them do it. Yep. I agree. Frank oh, Costello. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Anyways, guys, I just want to jump on real quick and say hi. Hey, it was nice meeting all you guys. Um, no nice meeting you, man. Up early. Likewise, take man. Take care. And we'll talk to you guys soon. All right. You too, right, buddy. Have a good night. pleasure, man. Thank you. Who else has got to get up early? Uh, I do. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Not me. Jeff, I, drive, uh, I, drive, I drive overnight, so I don't get up early. I drive overnight trucks. Oh, nice. Uh, I'm going to a water park tomorrow, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to see videos of Agnostic on the water yeah, slide. Right in his mouth. Definitely photos of that. Nah, good luck with that. I'm that I'm that old leech that fucking hangs out near near the events and I check out all the twenty year old broads. <laughs> You're honest, that's fair. Hey, what uh, nah, like, like I'm trying to teach my son how to be a philanderer. <laughs> <laughs> Agnostic, could I ask like if you live in New York, what water park are you going? You must be having to travel a little bit. No, nah, about an hour. It's a place called Zoom Flume. Oh, I never heard of that. Me that neither. Bad. I like it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could have. <laughs> the, gang, the gangster that scares me, I can't mention on this show. Oh, I know. Oh, no. Uh, well, yeah. taking him out well, of it, taking Jeff, any color you, guys you can't mention. <laughs> Well, let me rephrase. You and I always different. It, it, let me rephrase. It, it's, not a, it's not a fear thing. It's just knowing that at any given time, you have to be careful with what you do say. Man, call off. Call off. Man. Yeah. Probably Toto Reno probably would have terrified me. Mm. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why I said Pino Greco, but that's just an extension. Mad of- Sam Stefano. Mmm. That's probably the worst. That's probably the guy that if he pulls up outside of your house, you're like, well, I might as well jerk off before I walk out the door because I'm not coming back. <laughs> and he was a sick little fuck. He'd probably make me do that before he killed me. He'd probably jerk you off. Or yeah. hook up with his wife. No. Like, yeah. That was He'd crazy. Make you bang his wife. God, what a name. Can you imagine what his fucking wife thought? <laughs> being so old school, they gotta listen and be married to that guy. Well, look at the guy. He looked like fucking Shemp Howard with Down syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> did Did you ever see so somebody, you ever see the interviews with them? No. So we, I don't. Guys, be careful because I don't know who this is because we keep having weird people pop in. So let's see. Hello. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every no, no. I'm not no fucking creep weirdo it's all straight i'll just i just, just happen to catch this right now oh, okay good live. yeah 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 welcome uh, yeah it's cool what y'all are doing man that's that's um that's funny i've never i've actually never like um signed into a lot of this funny as shit me neither bro this is my first time too so yeah they're yeah. being gentle they're being cool, gentle bro. cool you know mine's as well man the day, yeah, right. The days we live in, you can have access to shit like that. Um, mm-hmm. let me think. Uh, Frank Costello, all right, because one of y'all were mentioning like who's your favorite, like who you fuck with. Frank Costello to me, Antonio Cardo for sure. Mm. But uh, Frank Costello is the funniest man because like he got they creased his scalp, they almost clipped his ass. Uh, you know the uh, the chin. Yep. Um, I he that he made it out. He left. He was like, "Fuck it, I'm I'm done. I've done enough." And he went back to the old days. So yeah, like that's probably my favorite. Even Smart though you move. didn't ask me that question, I just figured I. I well, he definitely paid his tax. <laughs> yeah. is, is, uh, is Costello? Do you think Costello is the highest guy 
ever to kind of like be able to retire and walk away like he did. Like there was no violent ending. Uh, I don't think he didn't end up in, I mean, there, there was no, like there was no real tragic end. It's like Gigante went at him and then he kind of said, all right, that's it. Vito stepped in and yeah. I mean, they bombed it. They bombed his grave <laughs> at the cemetery. I think agnostic fell out of the fucking tree. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to climb higher next time. That's funny. Shit. <laughs> no, I, I, I think definitely, I, you know, I think if Costello really wanted to be a prick, he could have been. Yeah. Oh, look, look, he climbed back in the tree. Did you climb back up in the tree? <laughs> I'm minister of the underworld. Agnostic? No, Frank Costello. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't even know who's talking. Agnostic, you back? Are you there? Fell out there of yeah, Fell fucking out raccoon. Right. And hit the phone out of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey Jeff, yeah. I thought you said it wasn't no retribution about retirement. If you if you never ratted on nobody, just the next man take your business and business as usual. That's I think it. it just honestly, I, I think it just really depends on who you are. Okay. What your motivation is. You know? Yeah. I, the, like I said, the rules only apply when they apply. I think with Costello, he earned his way out when he took that shot. Oh, yeah. Well, and you always have to keep in mind, if you go at tree, the king, you? you better not miss. So, I mean, there's always that you could go at Costello, but if you miss and he comes back at you after he tried to retire, that's not going to go well. Well, and he was still valued to them even after he retired. He was still valuable. His political connections. Yeah, you know, he still had the political connections and, and whatever. I think Agnostic fell out of the tree again. Oh my god, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's crazy how this time he didn't small. go back at uh, Giganti or Genovese. Like, I mean, he could have didn't go back at him like qu quick. He's well, he got, he got even in the end. Yeah, the sending Genovese to prison for you know <laughs> being in on that. I mean, that's you, you know, know what? that's that's a far worse thing to do to Vito Genovese. Absolutely. Yeah. You imagine that's worse than death. insane shit he was probably saying in prison. Oh, imagine kill every one of these motherfuckers when I get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and he probably yeah, always thought he was going to get out too. You either, Jeff. Do what? I never said thank you to you, man. You don't have to thank me for nothing. Bro, you did that whole what if shit and gave me a shout out, and all my friends didn't believe me that you was really answering my questions until you fucking yeah, said why name. not? Why not? You listen, you don't know what it's like to walk down the street in Manhattan and people scream your name and you turn going, Who the fuck is that? I don't know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> or like when you're eating dinner and you don't want to be bothered and people walk up to you, are you that? No, I'm not him. You got me confusing <laughs> somebody else. Now I see your Chris Corky's face. I fuck around if I ever see y'all eating. I, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's like being starstruck. <laughs> Believe me, I'm, I'm no fucking. I'm no fucking star. Believe me. Yeah, me neither. Appreciate the comment, but I'm far from a star. <laughs> Everybody nah, idolizes things in different ways. It's hard. For yeah, a that's while. true. I mean, you're entitled to idolize what you want. That is true. That is true. Yeah. Well, I think we'll be good to go at the meet and greet, man. It looks like we're going to have enough people, hopefully, if everybody that Yeah, I, I've got – um, let me look. Uh-oh. Who's backstage now? No, it's not – no, oh, I just got a message from somebody. Uh oh right, fuck it. I'm going to Umberto's Clam House. I'm out. <laughs> uh, good night, man. No, nah, I'm kidding. I'm, oh, I was like, damn, I'm sounds kind of good, to be honest. And they're open late, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> no, I've, got, I've got two emails, four email, four, five. Okay, so we're we're getting there anyway. Good, good. We're getting. Was there. the message from a two one five or two six seven area code? I have no idea. I'm not telling you. <laughs> not telling you. Because you know, I sent that email earlier, that message earlier. That I'm getting a response now. Oh, I hope it's a good one. Well, yeah, but then it's like, oh, everybody's watching you. You're hilarious. It's like thanks. <laughs> Listen, you defended your friends through and through, and they could trust you. They should also then, trust you. It's it's an odd thing when you're you're not from an area and you walk into a social club, 
and you're getting a drink and whatever, and you're talking to people and you hear this voice, you're like, why does that sound so fucking familiar? And it's you on a TV in the back room while they're all gambling. And you're just like, okay, I gotta go. <laughs> That'd be weird. <laughs> That'd be really it, weird. It, it's, it's, it's a very, very, very strange thing. Yeah. You know? And then, and I gotta be honest, when I'm down in South Philly, there was one time, I think I was outside of Phillips steaks and I was grabbing a cheese steak before I was going to see my friends. And uh, this guy walked up and goes, Hey, you're Jeff Canarsie from Mob Talk Radio. And I thought the guy was going to shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, put, he pulls his hand out real quick. And I'm like, I put my hands up. He's like, Hey man, I just want to shake your hand. I'm like, all right. <laughs> okay. Well, you cool. never know. Cause you never know. A lot of people don't, don't like Jeff Canarsie, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh. Be safe driving on the road, April. We don't need any accidents now. And I think we think agnostic uh, fell out of a tree, April. He might. Yeah, I mean, this up. time it was uh, the fucking uh, squirrel that got him. <laughs> since, since you guys listen to my show, what do you guys like most about the show? Because I never know. I, I'm I'm kind of old school. Like, I mean, and Chris and I have talked about this a lot. Like, I'll go back on YouTube, like. Cause I remember times in my life where I would be listening to like your old shows that you'd put out weekly on YouTube and, um, Carlo Gambino, uh, you know, the first show on, uh, uh, Gigante, like I'll go back and listen to those. Like the, I mean, the information that you provide and the depth of knowledge that you have and if in the, and the depths that you're willing to go to get the knowledge, like that's what I crave. Like the, the, the insight that you bring, the knowledge that you bring, and then the, the stories. I mean, you don't talk real life today, but you still bring enough stories and, you know, stuff from today that, you know, people still feel like they're getting today and the history. But I have the information you provide is second to none. Hmm. I appreciate that. That's, that's, I like, Jeff, honestly, when you got some shit off, you got to get some shit off your chest before you even start the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's been some epic rants over the years that have been I'm classic. I'm telling you, yo, his rant is some of the best, yo. It's free therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, man. Well, and, and you ever notice he always he always apologizes first? Listen, yeah. I'm, I'm just sorry, yeah. but that's some shit I need to say right now. Just bear well, with me. I think, I think a part of what's wrong with the genre in general, I mean, I could nitpick and like really go after people, but it's like, I don't want to do that. But my whole thing is, if you're unwilling to, to do research, don't ask for a dollar. Right. And, if, and, if, and if you're not willing to be honest and give something of yourself and give back to people, um, then what the fuck is the point? I mean, I, I think legitimately, like, I want to say last year, the year before, the year before that, something close to like $8,000 we gave away. And just free shit because it's like if it, it I'll give you a good example. Damn. I can be sitting here in my uh, go into my bedroom, be watching TV, it could be 2 a.m. And somebody who listens to my show can say, hey, I just got a new credit card and I can't get the show. Most people will just ignore that and deal with it the next day. I get my ass out of bed. I go right over. And if I can't figure it out that night, I send them an MP3 immediately mm -hmm. so that they don't feel like they're losing something. But I, I just can't wrap my mind around if you're going to run a business, you got to treat people how you would want to be treated. Right. But when these other people like, and I'll give you a good example. I have recently seen three other content creators steal my work verbatim word for word. Yeah. That's like fun. Using verbatim. a transcript and AI hit print to what I said, what they said, and it's identical. And it's like, just do your own fucking work. Word for word. Really? Yeah. And it's, it's like, crazy. I, I don't, and if they think I won't punch them in the face, they're wrong. <laughs> but here's the funny thing is they, they'll copy you and you've been doing this now for what, like five years. I mean, over five, over that, yeah. I've been listening for five, but I mean, yeah. they'll, they'll copy you and you've been doing this for five years and they still can't do anything unique. Like how, like they're caught, they copy your style, they copy your information, they copy everything like that. And you're still killing them doing stuff that they've never even thought of doing. Well, a lot of them, you know, a lot of them are getting better YouTube numbers, but a lot of that's because, you know, I don't do YouTube. B, I don't buy subs either or views. I refuse to do that. I earned everything the hard way. Uh, and I think the other thing, too, is like this whole, let me tell you something, motherfucking rat. Like, I was the first one. Yep. They all have, they all have carbon copied that. I think there's uh -huh. only one guy, I think, on there that really does what I used to do, but he does it in a different way. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think there's a market for that. But what I don't understand and what I get very confused about is I can put video, I can do X, Y, Z, I give you all the bells and whistles, and I can put a video out that has more information, more certifiable shit, and then somebody does a 20-minute video with everything that's wrong, and they do like 70,000 views. I don't understand that. So a lot of it, I think, is because I'm a small market, A. B, it's because I don't think I'm on YouTube a whole lot. And C, you know, everybody wants me to go after this one and that one, but, man, I've done that. I fought, How about I fought you listen to one more big thing, Jeff, you don't do. You don't make shit up. If you don't know, yeah. you don't know. You don't yeah, make shit up. I was about to say that the reason they do numbers is because they keep coming up with more and more extravagant stories. And I think you said this a while ago, like all of these guys, like, you know, clan, everybody like that. And I'm not mentioning names. I'm, you know, I'm not getting in trouble here, but like all of these guys, it's like they come to a realization where they realize they have no more stories because they really weren't doing anything for that long. So they don't have any more stories. So then they take bits and pieces of other stories, put it together, make it sound whatever and then put it out there and then yeah seventy thousand people that are just looking for just basic mob information or dummies that click on it meanwhile you do a you pacer account and everything and kill it and because it's not you know uh toto rena and carlo gambino had a cage match in philadelphia and uh jimmy hoffa was the referee like and i saw it like gianni (laughs) russo like because you don't say that people are like oh well this is boring yeah, unless you're unless you're screaming at somebody or fighting with somebody, it, it, it's just not, I guess, good enough for a lot of people. But I will. Hello, Will. How are you? Hey, I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on. Hey, uh, really, really appreciate the work you do, man. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's always good to hear somebody appreciates something. You know, sometimes yeah. I wonder. Yeah, but uh, I had an interesting story. Uh, my mother was a server in the Metairie area, which is a suburb of New Orleans. And oh, uh, Carlos Marcello, I know where we're going with this. Yes, sir. Uh, um, who's probably you know one of the most powerful guys ever, uh, mm-hmm. underrated. Um, but she was a server, and he would come in every once in a while. And I don't know if you, I'm sure you guys are old enough to remember. You used to have the little credit card things, and you had a, like three three copies. One would go to the customer. Right. And my mother stole his one of his copies. That's awesome. And I have it still. But I said, Mom, what were you thinking? I mean, this could have ended up bad. You never know. (laughs) But she said, F it. I'm going to do it. I did it. And I just thought it was kind of cool. And Sorry, um, Will. I, I'm, I'm only 34. I don't remember that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Uh, they had the big block thing. You had to literally pull it across. God, what a nightmare. That fucking yeah. thing. Just to use it. But, yeah, man, that's uh, I, I thought it was a cool story. And uh, I really, I'm kind of new to, to your stuff. And um, you were talking about Panisi. I made a joke. I see dead people. I mean, I see many people. Um, <laughs> but, hey, Hey man, I appreciate you having me on. That's kind of all I got. I'm not really a a good speaker, but uh, I appreciate the time, man. And, hey, Will, and, I got and, a quick question. Did your mom ever? Did Marcello ever tell your mom stories about how he uh, made it through the jungle of Guatemala, getting thrown out of the plane? <laughs> <laughs> no, the only thing my mother ever heard him say about her, she, you know, he didn't talk any business, but. Uh, she said, uh, he said about her, oh, that's a good girl. She's not Italian, but she's a good girl. Uh, that's all I said. But hey, I appreciate you having me on. And Anytime, y'all have a great, have a great night. All right, you too. You too, Will. Uh, that was cool. Yeah. Hey, well, Jeff, I told you you bigger than what you thought you was. Yeah, well, yeah, you yeah. Know, I have 19,000 subs. I want 19,000 people in the chat. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I was actually in New Orleans, and uh, I actually was with some very interesting people down there. So, for anybody that says that that's uh, non-existent, would be very wrong. Wow, I thought it was defunct. I believe it. New Orleans is crazy. Yeah, it's all right out there. It's all right. That's Ground Zero. That's where the first mob family in New York City was started. Right. That's that's what I that's what I've read. Absolutely. That's Agnostic awesome. said that. Um, oh, here you go. When the do uh, when the do was doing remakes of your show, it was pathetically funny. Yeah, he can't be me. 
Hello, welcome to the Mob Talk. Sit down, another episode. Go fuck yourself and get a new <laughs> haircut. See the next comments. I, I said, agnostic. Did the raccoon get you again? He said, yeah. He tried to rob me this time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, believe it or not, I've never said this publicly. I, I might as well say it now. You know, at one point, I tried to get all of the content creators together. It would have been yeah, me. It would have been me, FBS, RJ Rogers, Jeff Nadu, and uh, Tom uh, Lavecchia. And like, I had this whole thing set up. It was going to be fantastic. A mob roundtable. You have all the different personalities you have in the room. You got all the different opinions, and Nadu killed it. Yeah, the only the only one that they kept getting in touch with me was FBS. He wanted to do it, and I, I would I wanted to have him on because his mob uh, knowledge is pretty good. So I mean, it's like there was no reason for him not to. But then I heard Nadu went around trying to put the kibosh, and then wanted to do the whole thing himself. Just like all of a sudden, how now he oh, wants to have sorry. a meet and greet. Imagine that. No. Nah. Yeah. Nah. That's, what mean, that's what he means about nah. copying what he nah. does. I Can't mean, be. Uh, wow. I offered to fight him at R Rough and Rowdy till he won't do it. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. You were going to wow. slap it out with, with old uh, Nadu. <laughs> you, you know what? I I, 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 I want to be careful what I say because, you know, he threatened to sue me and everything. But oh, shit. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's chill. Let's chill. He, um, he told a story that he was in somebody's house. And they bought him a <laughs> box of Wheaties. Took him shopping. Yeah, and and what's hilarious? <laughs> what's hilarious about that story is the guy he's talking about. I'm very close with. And I says, right. "You ever heard of this guy?" He goes, "No. Who the fuck is that?" <laughs> 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 and if you guys think the mob guys don't watch this shit, you're out of your minds. They watch every fucking thing that happens. And as a matter of fact, I email a guy on Tuesdays who's in federal prison right now because he wants the update on what's going on. Right, right. It's the first question out of his mind is, oh, is that fucking dickhead still fighting with Angel Gotti? Is this one still fighting with Gotti? <laughs> and, and up and down the board, the one guy they hate the most is Lee Cole. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't like Jeff Nadu, but they really don't like Lee Cole. He's the worst? Yeah, oh. and I think a lot of that's just because he put – they don't like anybody that, that platforms informants. But like they always said, well, if a guy comes across from day one says he's going to platform a rat, it is what it is. But somebody who says they hate them, who has no moral stance to really do or say otherwise, yeah. platforms them, then hates them, then platforms them again. It's just, come on. You have no credibility. Zero. Yeah, that's a good point. So that guy that Lee Cole used to have on there in the beginning of his show, he was an informant? Uh, Danny Trio? Yeah. No, he was a nobody who fictionalized his whole backstory. So he never did 20 years, Jeff? No. Oh, my God. You know what he got arrested for? Breaking into houses and stealing underwear. <laughs> what? The wash and wear burglar. He would steal, break into houses, take a shower, steal their underwear and wear it. He was That's never a made guy, never around anybody, never nothing, nothing, nothing. That's what he got pops for was stealing under what the yeah. fuck? Yeah, like B and E shit. Yeah, he was never a gangster, never murdered nobody. Yeah. Yep. It's crazy that you knew you knew immediately who I was talking about. Sounds like a well, sexual predator. Well, I knew from day one he was a fraud. <laughs> I knew from day one he was, you know, telling a bunch of bullshit. But it seems like when I try to do somebody a favor and I say, listen, the guy you got on, he's a fraud. It's gonna come back to haunt you. They always say to me the same thing. Oh, you, you, you're a has been. Nobody cares. You don't know anybody. And then every time I watch and it happens and I go, oh, there you go. I think it's hilarious. They call you a has been. It's like, yeah, bro, I has been in this industry since the beginning. So like, there's no has been about you. <laughs> well, the, the argument I make with them now when they start their shit, because every once in a while I get little nasty emails from, from certain people as I say, yeah, but do you have a paid podcast? Do people pay to listen to you? Oh, I get donations. I said, that's, that's different. Right. That's because I work for a living. I, I work. I don't just go, please give me your money. You know, it's come on. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Hey, listen, we're, go we're over three hours. I, I got to bounce and grab something to eat before I go to bed here. But All right, well, yeah, why don't we just fucking end it then? Why don't we just end it? How about Sounds that? Sounds good, guys. 
You guys Jason, all right thank with you for that? coming on. No, no yeah, problem. Thank you guys for doing this. We'll do this week. again. We'd love to have you guys come on. Dean, anytime I'm on, you're welcome on, my friend. Yo, I appreciate everybody. Thank you. Every last one of y'all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. next one. Yeah. It was you guys good. could all come on again. Yeah, this all right. Cool. I'm gonna this I'm cool. gonna kick Let's you guys out. I'm, I'm hey, Jeff, kick- I got some shit for you on your next mob talk too, man. I've been hitting this in the Havana Nocturne, man. All right, right on. <laughs> Chris, I'm kicking you from the room. Bye. Bye, guys. Do it again, right, man. I'm kicking everybody out one by one. Dean, it's a pleasure meeting you, my friend. Likewise. All right, take care of your kids. Enjoy. All right, guys, that's going to be it for tonight. Uh, listen, at the end of the day, I'm not sitting here trying to talk shit about anybody. I'm just kind of. Just calling it like it is. Call a spade a spade. That's the the best thing and the most honest thing you can do is just be honest. Uh, If you guys could all do a a little favor for me, please like, share, and subscribe. Please feel free to donate. And please, we will be back on Thursday of this week at 8.30 p.m. So be back Thursday at 8.30, Thursdays and Sundays. Uh, All that being said, that's going to be it for tonight. Uh, Have a good week ahead. Be safe. And if anybody needs anything, you can reach me at mobtalkradioshow at gmail.com.